making changes. This is this is typical for this program if you've ever watched before. <laughs> <laughs> making those little last minute changes. Okay, I think I got you pretty well centered up. We have to. Oh shit! I forgot to change the text, didn't I? I should. Oh, wait, oh, is it generic? Sure, yeah. It might be a generic message. Let me see. Okay. Uh, wait. Welcome to episode eleven. Wait, is this supposed to be episode twelve? I think I fucked yes. that up. This is supposed to be episode twelve. Yeah, because the the one Oops. that's titled four hundred dollar iPhone should say yep. episode eleven. Whoopsie! Yeah. This, is, this is what happens when you wake up five minutes before you do the show. <laughs> it's oh, like man. it's like we both like just woke up like fifteen minutes ago. We're getting our coffee. You're in your garage. <laughs> I I dig it because it's kind of like it's kind of like how the news like the news anchors and stuff. Yeah, like, it, it, it so kind of like, suits you though. Like you you look like a mad woodworker. Like you look like a dude <laughs> that should be like hanging out in garages. <laughs> I built these shelves. I, I did these shelves myself. I did dude. This. I, I can see all that sh painting they're, they're you've been doing behind cake. you. They're beefcake, these shelves. Probably could do 500 pounds. They would be nice. So what you're saying is I can come over and I, I can actually sit on them without them collapsing? I didn't, I didn't want to say that, but it was what it's was amazing. in my head. <laughs> oh, mine too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let, let me know if you need me to come over and stress test that shit, man. I'm available. It's like a bunk. Always. I made, I made a, a bunk rack just in case. Oh, that's hilarious, And then, dude. yeah, the... Um, my lady and, and the little one, my intern, were, uh, they found this. The neighbor was giving away this desk, um, just put it out on the street, and it was pink. It was kind of an ugly, coral pink. Yeah. So they're painting it white. Dude, that's awesome. That's, that's pretty cool. That's awesome. Yeah. Let's see. So uh, I did I did last-minute phone in some topics there that you can see Okay. that we will get to eventually. But first, we're going to let people flow in here because, you know, it takes, a little, it takes everybody else a little while to get up and get moving. Get, get their yeah. bones popping. Yeah. Oh, dude, I'm stoked about that that RTX voice thing, dude. I yeah. saw, your, saw the clip from, I think it was from your Twitch stream. Yep. Um, dude, it went so. That that's looks the most freaking cool. That was the most viral thing I think in my entire life in that period of time. It's dude, like it amazing. I don't that's even know how that's possible. Desk. So I'll, I'll tell you guys the story if you guys don't know. Um, I uploaded a video that that in itself is an amazing feat. Like I usually upload a video about every three to six months. Um, I know, right? <laughs> so, anyways, what prompted me to uh, upload the video was I did a live stream uh, three days ago, and I'm using this RTX voice thing. I find out for, uh, basically it went through like the YouTuber chain of custody. This guy Epos Vox, he posts right. a video of him. Have, he has a vacuum cleaner, like one of those little handheld vacuum cleaners next to his head, and you can't hear it while he's talking in the mic. And I'm like, okay, this is he's fucking pulling our chain. This is like April Fool's 2.0. And I go look at the program, and it says this is what it does. And I'm like, oh, shit, okay, I want to try this. So I download it. It's, like, super simple to install. Um, I get it working, and I go live on my live stream. But don't even test it first. I just say, fuck it. I just go on my live stream on Twitch, fire it up, and everybody's like, wow, dude, your, your mic sounds really good. Like, they can't hear the air conditioner. So I'm like, I turn on my fan. They can't hear the fan. I start banging on the desk with this hammer. They can't hear the hammer. I pull out, like, a leaf yeah. blower and a full-size stand-up vacuum cleaner, and it's like nobody can hear anything. And I'm like, That's okay, it, it is. It's like, it's it's pure fucking magic, dude. And so uh, so somebody... Do you, have it, do you took, have it on right now? Yeah, it's on right now. Like, check check this out. Here, look. Let me see. Uh, well, here, let me double check. I believe it's on. Let me. <laughs> it's cranging do, do, on the desk. Do you hear my air conditioner in the background? I don't normally. Here so. we go. So so here. No 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 no. Hold on, hold on, hold on. No 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 no. no. This, That's this, too this, fucking cool. This is the one that made it viral. Okay, this is the one that made it viral. Let me turn it off really quick so you can hear the difference. Okay, so the effect is off now. Now, now listen. Here's the hammer. Now I hear your AC. So this is the hammer. You hear the AC. Now listen. Okay, now watch. I'm gonna turn the effect on while this is running. Watch this. Now I got a leaf blower right next to me, and I can talk to you with a leaf blower running. That's crazy. Is that cr like how does that even work? Like watch, y'all. Turn. Look, look. Like I can just stay here with a leaf blower and a hammer. This is all I did on the live stream, and people just flipped their shit. They're like, "How's this working?" I can't even hardly hear myself. This thing's so fucking loud. So, and then I'll turn it off. And there you go. Now you can hear it, right? It's like, yeah, it's it's gonna sound a little robotic when you get close to it because I'm basically overdriving the microphone at that point. But here, watch. You hear my AC in the background? Now watch. Here, let me push the button again. Wait for it, and boom. Now you got no more AC. It like uses machine learning and AI to like figure out the background, so it works a lot different than conventional like noise reduction. 
And it's, yeah. it's just it's, it's just fucking amazing. So what happened was somebody posted a clip. They, they basically took a clip from my Twitch video of me banging on the desk and holding a, a leaf blower. And they recorded it and uploaded it to Twitter, which normally I wouldn't approve of because like it's like, come on, guys, just link to the clip. Like, don't re-upload shit. Right. But the guy was yeah, really that's... nice, and he actually did tag me. He did tag me, and he attributed me. So I'm like, at that point, I don't care. Like, that's he was really cool to do that. I, I look at the shit the next day, like hundreds of people are messaging me on Twitter. I'm like, what is going on here? Dude, it has 1.7 million views and like 46,000 likes and like 20 some thousand retweets on Twitter. Like nothing That's I've awesome. ever posted. And the, and the guy that posted it doesn't even, his posts usually don't do that that great. Like it was, it was all over Reddit. NVIDIA picked it up and contacted me. I had a conference call with NVIDIA a couple of days ago. Wow, I mean, dude, it awesome. just, it blew up. So I was basically forced to make a video at that point. Cause I'm like, there's no way you can't make a video after it does, does that well. And, yeah, uh, right? but the problem is everybody stole that footage and re-uploaded it to YouTube. So I found like two, three videos now so far that have like 30, 20, 30, 40,000 views on them that are just the 20 Aww. second segment stole from my Twitch video. So I was like, fuck. So it's, it's kind of already like taking the steam out of it. Um, so of course the video I uploaded didn't do uh, terribly well, but at the same time, it's like the people that are still discovering this are just like, holy shit, this is amazing. Um, and I had a lot of fun making the video. It was really fun. Like at one point, I think I was holding like a vacuum cleaner, like a full size vacuum cleaner, a leaf blower, the hammer. I mean, I was trying to do yeah. everything I could to test the shit out of this thing. It, it was fun. Oh, um, apparently. So Alexander Vanderwall, thank you for the $5 super chat. He says, oi, the RTX isn't enabled for YouTube, but rip headphone users. Wait, what? What, what does he mean by that? I don't know. The RTX is your filter for YouTuber. wasn't connected to the stream audio. It did not work. Read the chat. <laughs> Wait, it worked for you though, right? <laughs> we, we, I, I, I. Oh, was I know what happened. Okay, everybody's really confused now. Like, why is he saying this is so awesome? Okay, hold on. I, I <laughs> forgot. I chat. forgot. My audio is actually captured through OBS Studio, whereas yours is captured through Discord, where I have the. Oh, I didn't have the right device selected. Okay, let's do that again. All right, so, so now I just switched it. Okay, so now you guys are on the RTX voice device. Now, can you guys hear my AC now? I Sorry, I, I, everybody's like, read the chat. Guys, I can't read the chat yeah. while I'm demoing my shit, okay? You just calm your tits. Calm your tits, guys. Calm them, like massage yeah. them gently until they're calm. Yeah. All right, so now you guys can hear. Okay, now, now you guys will know what. So you guys will know now. Watch, watch. Okay, now you guys can't hear that, right? So you can hear it before because I didn't have the effect on. Now you can hear it. Okay, now, now this should work. That's on. So here, I'll put it way over here. And let me pull up the effect. There you go, now let me turn it off. Now this is what it sounds like in my room right now with a leaf blower and a hammer going. Now I'm gonna turn the effect on, hold on. I'm gonna turn it on. Now I'm gonna bang on it some more. But now, even though it's a little robotic because it's so fucking loud, at least you guys can hear what's happening now. So it's fil it's fil it filters out everything in the background. I mean, I can I can bang on my desk. I can bang on my keyboard. I mean, it, it filters out a lot of it. So now now you guys can actually hear it. Um, sounds like an airplane black box recording. Yeah, using the, using the leaf blower is a little bit. Uh, how much does it cost? It costs nothing. It's actually a free beta that you can download. You just need an NVIDIA graphics card. And even though it's called RTX, you can hack it to work on GTX. Uh, we got confirmation it works on 1080s and 9 series. I wonder if I could do this live. Like, you can do it, man. This and <laughs> do it. I think that'd be I mean, like we, a great demo. We can we can talk about other stuff too, while, while, but I'm downloading it and I'm, I'm going through it. Yeah, it's really easy. Like once you install stuff. it, then you just go into uh, Discord and just set your audio device to the one that says RTX voice. There'll be like a different version of your microphone with RTX voice appended on it. Select that one okay. and boom, you got the effect. And it's literally just a checkbox. You turn on and off. But if you guys want That's to, crazy. after the stream, I have a whole video on my channel that I just uploaded yesterday that shows like the full demos, like doing everything with it, with the vacuums and the bigger fans and stuff like that. So you guys can check it out more in depth. I also show you the hack that you can do to edit the NVI file to get it to install on lesser cards. However, just uh, just be aware that it's probably not going to support the GTX cards in the future. The beta so like it, does with a hack. But the, what's that? It's saying it's saying Nvidia installer cannot continue because it's not yes, on your GPU. yes. So do I just close it and like no, it's still there? Yep. No, 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 no. It doesn't. This is where the hack comes in. So now close it. Okay. Like okay, I failed. Oh, what was me? Close okay. it down. 
And then what I want you to do is I want you to open up an administrator command window. Okay. So CMD. so open up CMD EXE as administrator. Run as a print administrator. Okay. There you go. And I'm gonna I'm gonna fly in. Oh, okay. Let I'm me hacking, know. What... I'm hacking the Gibson. You're hacking the Gibson. Okay. You got it open. I do. Okay. You want to go into C colon backslash temp. Colon backslash temp. Uh, temp is not a recognized as internal. Wait, what? Yeah. Uh, Are we talking like app data? Should I go? No, it, sh it uh, should be just under C colon backslash temp because Miranda's administrator. So weird. There should be a folder called C colon backslash temp backslash NVRTX voice. And you did open the command window as administrator? Uh-huh. Here, try going through your explorer. Try going through a file okay. explorer. Just open up C colon backslash, see if there's a temp folder. File explorer. And we go to this PC. We're hacking right now, guys. We're hacking. So. Yeah, here we go. Oh, that's weird. Yeah, I wonder why it didn't. We can do it. We can do it a different way. So just, just okay. uh, go and in there. I do see. I see NVRTX voice. Yep. Go in there, and then you want to go into a folder called NVAFX. Uh huh. And then what you and have to do NVI. is you have to edit the NVI file, but you have to do it under an administrative credential. So the easiest okay. way I found to do this, and I showed in my video, is just open up Task Manager, and then okay. just go to File, Run New Task. And then check the box that says create this task with administrative privileges and then just type in notepad and press enter. Okay. Okay, you got it. Uh-huh. Now now uh go to file and notepad and go to open and then go open up that MVI file. Got it. Okay. And then let me know once you have the MVI file open. This, we're doing it live. Folks. We're live, we're live hacking. We're uh yeah rtx voice to work on a t what do you have a 1080 1080 ti 1080 ti yeah, yeah we're gonna get this it'll work fine on a 1080 ti uh oh i need to look at all files and yeah one. yeah you do Open. see you're you're okay. way ahead of me dude all right you got the xml on your screen yes sir all right you want to scroll down you want to find an xml node called constraints Conditions so just scroll down until you find constraints source. I'm gonna just control F. Just I think it's hilarious <laughs> that they put the. I, I think it's hilarious they put the artificial constraint in an XML file and didn't think somebody was gonna find it in like ten seconds. Well, it's a beta. <laughs> oh. I, I know, but it's hilarious because all they would have to do is add like one line of code to check for an RTX signature on the card or on the driver, and then right. this would then hacking this would be a pain in the ass. But no, they just okay. did an XML file. So I see one constraints that has a property name of feature dot RTX That's it. voice level equals silent. Yep. Text Remove the whole constraint box. section. Remove the whole thing. The starting node, the ending node, and everything in between. Just grab start start selecting the okay. whole constraints node and remove the, the enter node and the exit node and everything in between. Oh shit, where's the exit? I need the I need the slash constraints. Okay? Slash constraints. So yeah, so select everything from okay. constraints to slash constraints and delete the whole block. Okay. All right, so let's find slash constraints. If you guys are just joining us, we have auxiliary installing RTX voice live for his 1080. So we oh, have to do the hack. It's hardly, it's like three lines. I yeah, it's only that. three lines. Is okay. it removed? And delete, save. Yep. I delete it, save it. Okay, now once it's uh -huh. saved, this is the important thing. Don't run the regular installer again because it'll just override everything. I made this mistake in my video Sense. and I had to correct it. So go back into your C clone backslash temp, NV, blah, 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 and run setup EXE from there. Uh-huh. That's the okay. trick, because otherwise it'll just unpack again and overwrite your changes. So now when it opens up, it should say that you passed the compatibility check. Come on, baby. Come on. Come on. We're live. Live demo. Preparing, installing voice application. Oh, yeah. We might have some. There it is. Yeah, it installed it. That's we haxered cool. it, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> we haxered it. That's All right. So, so we're. Like, well, now, like, I suppose the door opens or. Something oh, I just crazy. heard your voice stutter, so I think it just installed the driver. So is it done installing? Yeah. Default microphone is set to RTX voice, um, and we're going to do remove background noise from my microphone. Yep. And you can remove background noise from incoming audio. Yes, oh, that's the other thing this thing can do. I didn't demo that in my video, though, because <laughs> it's it, it it's only really works good with some music, and I didn't want to get DMCA'd. So. Uh, but is it enabled? Did you enable the effect? So check check the little box and move the slide. There it is. <laughs> now you can never hear us clap again. Clapping is a dead art. Oh, wait. I can't hear you now. Uh-oh. Oh, I think RTX voice worked a little too well, bro. Uh-oh. Pull that microphone in a little closer to your mouth.
okay, go back into Discord and make sure, like, go to Discord, go to settings, go to audio devices, and make sure that you select the RTX voice one. So under input devices, make sure it says microphone NVIDIA RTX voice. Oh, shit. I just fucked it up. Hold on here. I'm, like, going into settings and stuff and, like, messing up the video. Uh-oh. We lost him. We lost... I, I, I think the R... Yeah, I can't hear you at all. Here, disable the effect. Dis disable the effect, and let's see if we hear you then. It says you're muted. Oh, there you go. I fix. I fix. Oh, you fix? Okay, try it again. Did I? Yeah, I fix. There we go. There we go. No clapping. <laughs> Yeah, we, there we go. Oh, we have now oh. digitally removed clapping. <laughs> yeah, experts at work. Hey, man, this is legit how a lot of shit gets fixed in things. Yeah. Okay. Like, <laughs> you might be trying to be. See, it's it's awesome. cool because now if you had any background noise, it would be completely removed. But ironically, today I, is the one day you don't have finished. background noise. Yeah, right. Because, like, my fan isn't running and stuff. Yeah, because usually but... in your room, every time you talk, you hear. <laughs> Dude, this would have filtered that all out. But my um my lady might might be leaving uh at some time during the stream, so it'll be interesting to see if it cuts out the garage door and the uh, and the car and everything. Oh, that would that, be a that's trip. gonna be that's gonna be a massive amount of sleep. That'd be really cool. Oh, Tech We Love said Barnacles, what did he change because it didn't work for me? Uh watch my video. Tech We Love at the end of my video, oh. I show you an entire tutorial on how to do what I yeah. just told him to do so you can get it yeah. to install. This will install on any GTX card. Um Somebody even said that they got it working on a 580. Uh, they said it was really bad though, like it was like choppy and and they couldn't oh. like if they opened anything else, it would just stomp it. But you this can is some pretty get heavy. This is some oh, pretty yeah. heavy duty like machine learning stuff. So like I mean, some yep. people I, I skimmed an article that said it, it's it's adding like a two to three percent CPU utilization for this for this program to work. Yep. And for for this you since since you're in such a quiet environment, pull the slider down to about fifty percent on the effect. Okay, Maybe. because your, your your headset mic isn't quite good enough that it's still trying to like filter out just a little bit of your voice. Oh, okay. So, so there we oh, go. Much so better. It's, it's kind of a it's kind of like how hard. It needs to yeah, work. yeah. Okay. At a hundred percent, it's like it needs to be able to completely separate your voice out from the environment. So you need a high quality microphone. But if you turn it down a little Got bit, it. just, just a tiny bit, it'll still take out the majority. Like if you clap, we'll be able to hear it slightly, but not very loud. Like clap now. See, it's way quieter than if the effect was disabled, but now we can hear it a little bit. Dude, that's super cool, man. Yeah, you can dial it in, man. Hey, Alex, thank you for that $5 super chat earlier, man. Appreciate it. Oi, the RTX is enabled for YouTube rip headphone users. Oh, that's what he meant now. Now we understand. It's because I didn't have the right, the right thing selected. So the way this works is it installs another driver on your computer that acts like a sound card, but it's not really a sound card. It's a virtual sound card. And what it is, it's this RTX engine that's processing the audio in real time. So what happens when you select that microphone, it's coming through your physical microphone, then Windows is sending it through the other virtual microphone. And then when you select that in the software, it's gonna have the filtered audio versus just the regular audio if you select the, the microphone. It doesn't override it, it doesn't replace it or anything like that, it just depends to it. But the other thing it does is it filters clicky, audio. My, What's that? My, cl my clicky ass keyboard probably isn't being heard anymore too. Yeah, no, no, it filters out a lot of the keyboard. Like sometimes you'll hear like the initial two, one or two clicks, but then it figures it out. It's it's always it, it's always learning. And then if you guys want to help train this, um, I have links in my YouTube video in the video description where you can upload 15 second clips of your environment, like you talking in your environment. You upload yeah. them to NVIDIA and they add that to their training engine because this is just using a huge machine learning algorithm. So the more data you feed it, the more accurate it becomes. And then the next version they release will be that much better. And if you give them your audio clip, chances are that's going to be a part of the learning for the next version. So if it struggles, like we found out, we found one case that it struggles with. Uh, let me find it here. My mic. Oh, yeah, this right here. This is a Samsung remote control. Can you guys hear this? It cannot filter. Times. It cannot filter out yeah. the Samsung remote control. So what I need to do is record, go to NVIDIA's website and the URLs on my video. And all I have to do is just say, hey, what's up, guys? This is my environment. I'm banging a thing on my desk, blah, blah, blah. Do this for 15 seconds. And NVIDIA will add that to their model. And the next one that comes out will know how to filter this out from a human voice. It's That's really cool. It, dude, it's so freaking um, cool, man. And I love that I love that we're on this topic because I am a humongous like um, I suppose enthusiast or like um, it's super super cool and interesting to me this the the different ways that machine learning and AI I, I, I hesitate to use AI because it's not intelligent it's 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 really good at usually very narrow and specific tasks 
Um, but man, this is this is one of the coolest like real world examples of machine learning that like people can can actually play with and see the real effect of how just jobs and massive amounts of data can be used for like quality of life improvements. It's so, so cool. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, the main reason why they called artificial intelligence is because it's doing something you're giving it basic instructions and that's you're giving it the ability to learn within a certain scope, mm -hmm. but it's the one that's actually doing the learning. Like the easiest right. explanation that I can give you for machine learning, like matrix machine learning is uh, like, say you want to figure out what a cat and a dog is on the internet. Right. And you want, you want the computer to be able to identify. If you give it any picture, if I take a picture of my cell phone and my dog, doesn't matter where it is, what environment, what lighting, you want the it to be able to identify what a dog is and what a cat is. But you don't want to have to program that. You don't want it to go in there and say, oh, a dog has its eyes this far apart and the hair is this long and everything. You don't want to put in all those permutations because quite frankly, you couldn't. There's too much data for, for any amount of people to enter it in reliably. So right. enter machine learning. Now what you do is you show it a picture of a cat and you show it a picture of a dog and you tell it, this is a cat. This is a dog and you don't tell it anything right. else. You just say, this is a cat and this is a dog. Then you show it another picture. You say, this is a cat. This is a dog. You show it a picture of something that's neither. And you say, this isn't a cat or a dog. And you keep feeding it those, those things until it gets yeah. to a certain level of understanding where it basically looks at the geometry and the mathematics of the picture. And it says, this is a cat and this is a dog. Okay. Here's the things that I figured out are similar based on right. what you told me are right. And what you told me is wrong. And then you just unleash it on the internet on a data set and you let it go download every cat, every car picture, every tank picture. And as it goes, it's going to learn better and better how to identify cats and dogs It breeds that it couldn't even identify in the first place. It'll find enough stepping yeah. stones to get there. Then it eventually will be able to identify cats that, that basically don't even and look like normal cats. The thing is though, like it still requires a massive amounts of pre-sorted data. Correct. Correct. It does. Um, like you have to we, train it. It still needs. It still needs the human input. Yeah, the training. It, it needs to. It needs to have a million pictures that it knows are cats. It can't. Well, now. Well, with the cat experiment, could. you could do a twenty. I saw it done with twenty reliably. If you showed it twenty pictures it. of cats and twenty pictures of dogs. Now, now, granted, it still sucked after that. After the, but, but as it goes along, every once in a while, you have to step in and say, "Okay, you're going down the wrong path. Like you're, you're, you're a fucking idiot. Knock it off." Yeah. And if you just have to correct it a couple times along on its journey, and then it'll start getting better and better and better, and it'll only get better from there. It'll never be a hundred percent though. That's the interesting thing about it. It's just like with humans, right? It's like if you look at something, you might think it's a cat, and then find out later on that it's a fucking raccoon, but you thought it was a cat because it was at this distance or it was in this lighting. You know the the computer's held to that same type of constraint. Um, and with the audio stuff, the really cool thing about the audio thing is it's it's really hard to filter out background noise from audio that's inside of the human's vo vocal spectrum because it doesn't know it's a human yeah. voice. But with machine learning, you can expose it to so much human dialogue and so much natural flow of speech that now not only is it saying, oh, it's inside the human spectrum, we can't filter it out. It can actually go in and say, wait a second, it is inside of the human spectrum. And there is enough of a difference between what is perceived human speech and this weird, odd external noise that it can pull it out without too radically affecting the voice, which you can't do as an, like doing that as an audio engineer is like the holy grail. This thing's doing right. in real time what like an audio engineer goes to college to do. And the thing is, is most background noise is is, uh, is con constant, like fan noise and stuff like that. To filter that out, you right. can put on a high pass or a low pass filter. As long as the fan isn't in the human voice spectrum, you can filter it out pretty reliably. Um, the cool thing about this is you can have the fan change speeds. If I change the speed on the fan, I have to go redo my high pass and my low pass filter, depending on what spectrum I was filtering out. This in real time just chases the sounds around the room. It goes, oh, banging on a desk. That's not a human voice. Oh, vacuum cleaner. Right. That's not a human voice. Leaf blower. That's not a human voice. And it's it's figuring out how to not only identify and pull that out, but it's doing it so fast that there's no leg. Like, how how is that possible? Like, I go into Adobe After Effects and it's like I apply a filter and Adobe After Effects, and it takes like, you know, 20 seconds to like apply the filter to my audio feed. And it's like, this is doing this in real time. So it just goes to show like what you can do when you have that much GPU power. Hey, Jordy, thank you for the two, uh, are those the, not pounds? Those are the euros. Thank you for the two euros. He said it's not supported for surround sound though. Um, yeah, I wouldn't imagine that it's it, it's stereo is all you're going to get out of this. Like if you're, if you're planning on like real time processing seven channels of audio, with uh with matrix microphones and stuff like that yeah this probably isn't going to work for you um the other thing that makes this i think pretty unique is the fact that it does one microphone 
Because think about that for a second. Like if you want to do noise removal from an environment, you can use two microphones and use spatial removal where you basically say one microphone over here is hearing the environment and this, this one's hearing your voice and it can figure out oh. the delta between the two and pull the background noise. And okay. this is a common effect. They use them in studios. If you ever see sometimes in studios, they'll wear two lavalier mics instead of one. Oh, yeah. And the reason they do that is because the distance of the bottom one's slightly further down than this. So their voice is slightly lower on this. So they can figure out what is environment noise that's coming in from equal distance versus coming down from here. And you can do all kinds of weird shit with that. But the fact that this can do it with artificial intelligence, or let's just say, let's just say machine learning, the fact that this can just yeah. be a trained machine learning model that's just doing it for with one microphone and making that determination is pretty damn wild. I'm going to have to try this on my laptop. It has a 980M in it. I have heard that there's problems with the mobile the mobile chips. Let me know if you yeah. get it working because a lot of people Again, do. I mean, it's hard. This is hardcore processing. Like, it is. I bet, I bet a good chunk of like the tensor cores or whatever the fuck is, is being used like pretty tough in this. Yeah. Like, the, yeah. Oh, Origin said, is this, uh, oh, he I'm said, logged in. what if you're in a talking space in a space with a lot of people? Will that work? Actually, it will. Now, here's the interesting thing is it also seemed now. Now, again, I don't know the internals of this because they, they didn't publish how the technology works. So we have to make a lot of assumptions with this technology. But one thing we did know is when Miss Barnacles was in the room and we were doing the demo on Twitch, when she was close proximity to the microphone, it picked her up just fine. But when she was over by the door, it filtered her out. So I also think that part of the machine learning model is determining what whether you're the human voice that's present based on your distance from the microphone, basically your, your volume. So, that makes so, sense. so if you have a person behind you and a bunch of people talking in the background, even though it identifies those in the human spectrum of voice, they're far enough away from the microphone that it's losing enough of the treble and bass out of their voice that it can, it, it can accurately make the determination that they, they are not audio you want to hear and filter them out, which is really freaking yeah. creepy if you think about it. But they did say, um, I haven't tried it personally, but NVIDIA said that they did originally design this for streaming at conventions. Like like the that demos sense. that they gave of this was at conventions with a lot of people in the Ooh. background to filter them out. It makes sense because like you get a big enough crowd that that might as well be white noise anyway. Like you do the yeah. like on a show floor. You and I have been to PAX and, and TwitchCon and shit. That noise is just. All yeah, it becomes a white noise up. almost. Yeah. So it, it should be. It should be able to just pull that out like that like i mean yeah. it's it's That's really brilliant. freaking fucking cool brilliant. and i mean like look at this like here i'll even turn on this fan this is a fan normally i can't point at the microphone but can you hear the fan right now nope okay so i can talk there's do like i still a, sound okay yeah sound? there was okay. like a brief moment yep. where like there's like a and then it and then it like where it's like learning that. it right so wa yeah. watch this watch i'm gonna turn it off listen to this now listen to that yeah, now that's what I hear in my headphones. Like that's the mix. But now if I turn on the effect, it immediately identifies. Wait a second, that's that's wait, not audio that I want to hear, and yeah. it pulls it out. Man, and my I think mind it's the, is blown. So, so I mean, shit, I can have this fan blown at me. Check this out, this tornado. So this, this is a tornado, right? This this like you can never <laughs> I love use how this. We're on, just toying yeah. with this. This is just like a goofy. You can toy. never, <laughs> yeah, you can never use this on a live stream. Right? Like, like, okay, hold on here. Hold on. Let's see. Uh... Oh, I hear it a little. Hold on. Blowing shit all over my room. This is a very high power fan. I probably shouldn't be pointing this so much. I'm gonna just take I this. I hear it. I'm just gonna put it on my desk here. But <laughs> so can you guys? No, I can hear it. You guys can hear it. Here, I'll even get a, a little. Point. It's like it's like kind of cutting in and out. Now it's gone. No, no it's back. The effect's still on, or the effect's off right now. So you guys should be able to hear it. Can everybody oh, hear it? Oh, okay, yeah. There. Now, now, now it's just gonna blow the microphone out. So you can't even hear people watch. Yeah, even with the blown out audio. Blow but watch this, even with the blown out audio, like it'll still do a pretty good job it's of removing gone. it. It's gone. Isn't, isn't that That's crazy? Amazing. So I could I could have this That's fan sitting behind me, blowing at me, which I could never do this on a stream. I could never have a huge fan blown over my shoulder. But do, do I sound okay right now? Yeah, you're great. I, I'm literally just getting like blasted with air. Like look at my sleeve. Like can you see it kind of flip flopping in the wind? Actually, it's right. Oh. See my sleeve flopping in the wind? Now watch, I'll disable the effect. Now you'll be able to hear the wind. Like this yeah. would be a really annoying live stream, right? Like if, if you eh. did this, but now you can just turn it off. And now I've got a, I got fans blowing at me everywhere. It's like, man, this is like a godsend for fat people, dude. Holy shit. Hey, uh, Andres, thank you for the hundred sexes. We always love some sexes, buddy. I do. We do appreciate those sexes. Your, uh, Bjorn uh, Svensson, thank you for the 25 sex. He said, I just paused 3, or 3 million points of folding a home. Just passed it. Awesome. Well done, sir. Pup Shepherd, thank you for the $5. Silent, said, claps. 
silent claps. Oh yeah, there's silent claps. Oh hold on, hold on. No, this I gotta disable the effect for the claps here. <laughs> There, there we go. <laughs> I need to, I need to get him to add a hotkey to the beta so that I can put this into my stream deck so I can disable it and enable oh, it without man. the mouse. Uh, Pup Shepherd, thank you for the five dollar tip. All right, he said I often thought of combining voice recognition and natural speech software. Uh, come on, damn it! Why does this thing keep doing this? Six audio reducing the amount of ADR needed for productions. Yeah, there we go. Now, now I can see the whole thing. Uh, let's see. So fix audio reducing amounts. Of so the thing is, okay, so voice recognition is definitely a part of this. So so that does factor into it. Uh, Geek Moto, thank you for the $5 super chat. He said, hey, Jerry, I think I found a therapist. I see your weekly. Hope you're doing okay. Oh, therapists are awesome, dude. Therapists are I love my therapist. Like, honestly, ther therapists are some of my favorite people, and I highly recommend them to everybody. Just make sure you get a good one. That don't, don't, if you, if you get one, and you don't feel comfortable talking to them and you find that you hold back a lot of shit, um, you're just wasting your money. So, like, go, you need to go find yourself a therapist that you can literally, like, tell them where the bodies are hidden. Like, you need a therapist that you can trust where you're, like, basically, like, man, I just did, like, five rails of blow out in the parking lot and, like, shot two people. Like, you know, and they're like, how do you feel about that? Like, <laughs> that's that's the therapist that you need. Um, once you find them, oh, my gosh, they're so freaking helpful. God, that fan is so cold. I never thought I'd say I'm actually cold. <laughs> oh, burr. My God. Hey, Bidnick, he said, so this means no more people ripping massive farts on stream. I actually don't know if this thing would filter out a fart or not. That's the one thing I haven't tried yet. I have not tried just taking a big old beefer on my uh, my Rode NT1 microphone here, but that's that's definitely something that we'll give a try down the road. Hey, Tom Odisu said, it'll probably work on any card that supports NVIDIA's CU DNN CUDA Deep Neural Network Library. Uh, but performance will vary based on cards. DL tensor cores will work best. Yes, and I already talked to NVIDIA. I actually had a phone call. Surprisingly, they reached out to me and they were like, oh shit, we want to get on a conference call with you because I, I told them I was kind of pissed off about this whole GTX bullshit like where they're releasing this calling it RTX when it works on everything. And so we got on a call and they actually explained it in a way that I could understand being a software developer myself, which is even though this technically works on GTX, they don't want to support two separate code paths because the I, because their plan is to eventually optimize this completely for Tensor. Like, because the whole that idea is, is they want this to be able to work without, without changing the frame rate in your video games. Like when you flip this on and flip this off, they don't want it to affect your frame rate. Whereas on the GTX 1080, for instance, or the 1080 Ti, it does affect your frame rate very significantly. And it'll even affect it more once they grow this neural network and they make it bigger and bigger and bigger. So, so they were like, you know, we just had to make the conscious decision that if we support this across GTX, we would have to have two separate code paths that were supported, two sets of functionality, and it would just get expensive in development. So they decided that they were going to just focus on the tensor cores because that was the newest technology and they were going to optimize it for that. And once they explained it that way, I was like, well, you know, I still think it's cool. You know, the, you guys should leave it so that people can hack it and use it at their own peril, you know, in an unsupported way. And, uh, you know, I didn't really get like a super straightforward answer on whether that's going to happen or not in the in the future. But they didn't say it wasn't going to happen. Like they didn't say straight up that they were going to just block lock this out. But even if they do, you still have the beta. And you got to admit, this beta works pretty damn good. Like it works good enough that I'm using it on all my live streams now. So even if they never released another yeah. version of this, I would just continue to use this beta because it hasn't crashed yeah. once on me. And it works flawlessly in my environment. So, yeah. Yeah, it's only going to get better, though. Hey, Brian, thank you for those 10 pound ruse, man. He said, OK, fart for a tenor. Lol, good job. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, if I well, once my bowels start start processing this coffee that I'm drinking here out of my Barnacles Nerdgasm mug, say a plug there, get a member of Schmanian. Mm. Uh, I don't that know where like I was going with that. Fart. Did you hear any of that? No, here, do it again. Do it again. You hear it a little bit here. Let me try. Let me try it. <laughs> it's cutting out parts of it is for it really sure. <laughs> yeah for sure this is what it sounds like without the filter <laughs> it was doing a good job filtering yours out dude oh my god for science oh my gosh well geek mode oh, I, ho I hope your therapist uh I hope you have an awesome therapist, and I'm glad that you chose to. Therapy is, like, really important right now. And the cool thing is you can do it over uh, oh, video man. chat. For video sure. chat, dude. Or even if, if you can't afford therapy or you don't have uh, insurance, too. Like, just if you have a, everybody has that one friend they confide in, right? Like, that one friend that you just get drunk one night and send, like, pictures of your poops to and stuff. Everybody's got that one friend. Like, confide <laughs> in them. Call them up and do a, do a dump, man. Just, like, do a brain dump on them.
Uh, yeah. It's it's important Although, now to get something. What's up? I would interject and make sure that they have bandwidth, like to handle oh, that too. Like, that's a good point. Like, uh, you know, hey, I, I'm I'd like to vent. Like, are you able to process help help with this? Yeah, like, man, maybe they're going through some shit. And like they, you're right. Like they want to be there for you, but they're like, they're already carrying a lot too. So yeah, you don't want to call them up while they got like the gun in their hand and they're shaking. And you're like, oh, dude, I gotta tell you about my problems. Like, like make yeah. sure they're make sure they're doing okay first. And uh, maybe you guys can and, have like and, a mutual brain trade. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, therapy so. is important. Talking one thing that I, I one of my favorite books I've ever read, and I haven't read a lot of books. I mean, I know that's probably surprising to some of you that think that I'm a super genius with a uh, with a with a super big, you know. Um, but, uh, but anyways, the book, uh, unfuck yourself. Fantastic book. Oh, it's like, dude, it's, like ele- it's like 11 bucks. It's and I recommend the audiobook actually, cause the audiobook's read by the author and he actually puts a really nice spin on it, but unfuck yourself. One of the things that I really liked about the book and every time I read it, it reminds me is that talking out loud is important to understanding things. Even like when you, your inner monologue, that's like going on inside of your head, your brain doesn't process it the same way as when it hears it out loud. Yeah. So and, and oftentimes yep. too, like that voice, that especially the negative self talk, like isn't really you in a yeah. way. Um, like I know we're kind of we're kind of getting off of the tech stuff, but like no, this is still technology. That, this is mental technology. Like, some of that is is like has like been put into you. Like that voice has been from from your mistakes or failures or from from other people. Having having had had a negative effect on you, yep. on your self image, and and saying that shit, it seems super weird. It seems really silly, but like, literally, like looking yourself in the mirror and saying like, "You got this." Like, think back, like say it to yourself. Yeah, it positive really reinforcement, eye contact. Oh shit, and what's up, tiny? Oh man, look at that! Oh, did you just get a food what's drop? Up? Hey, I got yeah, man. You got a supply cool. drop? Yeah, I got my, I got my little supply drop right here too, man. Oh, we can both eat in front of everybody. It'll be awesome. Thank you. Do you want to say hi? You come say hello. This is my this is my intern. Hey, hello. So, can you say hi. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she looks tired. Thank you. <laughs> Man, I wish oh, I had man. an intern. Xander, Xander would just come in here and rip everything off the shelves and be on the floor <laughs> playing with it. <laughs> he, he's like, uh, you know, the scene in Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory where all the kids like run into the chocolate room and he like releases them and they all just go fucking berserk. That's Xander. Yeah, Every time yeah. I let him in here, he'll be like, he'll be like, Daddy, can I come upstairs? And and every once in a while, I'll be like, Yeah, I'm not doing anything. I'll let you come upstairs. And like, he'll run up the stairs, run by me through the door. It's like going into the chocolate room. I can hear Willy Wonka playing in my head, and he's just ripping everything off the shelves. And he'll have like ten things sitting on the floor around him like pretending they're cars and trucks even though they're like graphics cards and expensive things and i just come up here and i'm just like you know what that's really really cute but god please don't break it please don't break it <laughs> he loves it though especially the simulator over the corner he just sits on there and pretends he's a nascar driver oh, oh my cool. god uh let's see what do we got here come on varnicles your nerd cave must feel like disney world is it totally does like the way his face lights up when he gets to come in here um it's it's pretty amazing. And I want to the thing is, we used to do when he was younger, when I had my racing simulator work, he'd come and come in here and freaking, you know, sit on my shoulders while I was on my racing simulator for like hours. I'd just be playing iRacing with him sitting on my shoulders. And he is like just as ADHD as his old man. But when we played racing games, he could stay perfectly focused and perfectly quiet. And that was like his calming thing. Race cars for him. You turn on race cars anywhere in the house and he hears like NASCAR engines fire up. He comes bolting in the room, sits down and he's just still and quiet. It's like that's his one thing that just like totally, totally calms him. He's literally like the guy from the the original Fast and the Furious movie. You know what I'm talking about? The guy, the guy who like mm-hmm. builds the car. And he's like, oh man, engines calm me. That's that's Xander. Like engines definitely calm him. Uh, uh excuse me. Oh, did it filter out my burp? Uh, no. Nope. You still nope. get to hear burps? Okay. I guess nope. I guess that's uh, they, in their training model. They probably account for burps. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're like what if anybody wants to watch rick and morty this just isn't gonna work <laughs> all right what else we got so we, we hit the rtx stuff i missed i missed some of the topics What's amazon that? essential items yeah did you hear uh uh france apparently sued amazon for uh for only selling essential items right now and they won 
So Amazon in wow. France has to carry. Let me see if I can find the article here because I, of course, closed it like a dipshit. Uh, let's see here. France, uh, Amazon essential items. There we go. Amazon restricted from selling non-essential items in France after it loses court appeal. Or maybe this was the other way around. Hold on. Amazon restricted uh, from selling non-essential items in France after it loses. Oh, I think this is the other way around, dude. So Amazon oh. has lost its appeal of French court ruling that it requires the company to temporarily stop delivering non-essential items in France or face hefty fines. Uh, let's see here. The Versalis Court of Appeals upheld a lower court ruling that led the e-commerce company to close six of its ful fulfillment centers in France and put workers on paid furlough. Amazon uh, had said the definition of what goods it could ship was not clear rather than risk being fined, opted to temporarily close the fulfillment centers. Oh, well, that's fucking great. Okay, well, so this is a little bit different than I thought. Rather than be more specific about what they're going to sell, they just shut everything down. Yeah, basically is that, they. Is that well, my understanding? Yeah, wow. so so it sounds like so I had it backwards. So France was, didn't want them selling non-essential items. They wanted them to focus on just essential items because they didn't want to run uh -huh. around and like delivering. Well, actually, I guess dildos are essential items for some reason, but they didn't hey, want to man, deliver. Mental health is yeah, important. Mental health, man. Mental health. As long as they're selling the flashlights too. But anyways, <laughs> I digress. They have to have a lot of the. Uh, uh, basically, a lot of people are ordering stuff. They they just want them delivering essential stuff. They don't want any unnecessary interactions. And so Amazon, instead of just going, OK, OK, we hear you. You sued us for, you know, 100,000 euros or whatever. We're going to go ahead and just do essential items, just like they're doing in other places, too. Right. Let, let me keep in mind. They are yeah. doing essential items in a lot of places. They just close yeah. down all this. They, they just they put everybody on furlough. So everybody just basically gets like fired for a while. Why would they do That's that? That seems up. like a petty ass thing. Uh, yeah, please let us know in chat if we're misunderstanding this, because that seems really fucking petty uh, on Amazon's part. So it said, okay, the Versailles Court Appeals said that Amazon violated the ruling. The company would be fined 100,000 uh, euros for each delivery. Oh, for each delivery that does not meet the conditions. Okay, I can see why they did this now. Because, like, a single mistake, like, if somebody accidentally delivers, like, some Pop Rocks to somebody, then they get slapped with a 100, 108,000 U.S. dollar fine. Okay, that's that's dumb. Okay, France, you, you pretty much, you, you, you kind of you did that to yourselves, guys. You kind of did that to yourselves. Oh yeah, my god, that sucks. That's a bit extreme. Holy oh, fuck it. I don't know why they would do that. That's ridiculous. Yeah, I thought it I thought it was just a hundred thousand pound like fine for the whole thing. No, it's per per non-essential order. So if they deliver to your house a matchbox car, a ninety-nine cent matchbox car, and it is not deemed essential, Amazon gets fined a hundred and eight thousand dollars US for oh. each delivery that does not meet the conditions of an essential item. Wow. Okay. That's no wonder crazy. they closed shit down because that could happen by mistake too, right? They could just not have an item taken down in time what and a delivery have gets a, made. What if I have a mixed order? What if I've got hand sanitizer and masks and a bunch of Legos? Yeah, that's not hurting nobody. Does that become does that become an essential order, or am I get? Are, are they going to get in trouble? Like that's like I'm uh, man. Yeah. Like why wouldn't you just shut it down so that you didn't get, make a mistake? Yeah. Like and because get, that's and a, get end up in court. That's insane. A hundred a hundred thousand dollar fine. That's a per order. That's just ridiculous. They, they they basically were asking Amazon to just close their doors because there's no way a company would operate under those conditions because mistakes can be made. And you're right. Like if you're already ordering an essential item and you want to tax something else on, why is that? And I don't understand why that's the problem here, too, because they're doing the same thing on Amazon. They're like, oh, not an essential items here. Like I tried to order a, a plumbing wrench and it was like a month to get it delivered was the yeah. estimated delivery date. I was like, well, just deliver all my toilet paper. I've had I've so I ordered a new uh, a new vest for my dog. Uh, it's like a, a harness, right? Yeah. It said it was going to show up May first, and I ordered this a week or more ago. It showed up the next day. So like, I don't I don't know. You know, they warned me like, hey, you know, some stuff is going slow because blah blah blah. But Weird. Like, it literally showed up the next day, and so I don't know. Like who decided that? Like why? Why did that show up quickly when I don't even? And so I'm just. So what I you're just, saying I, is I should just order the pipe wrench and just see if it shows up in like three days? Yeah, I mean I've, I'm emotionally like prepared to wait, however long it takes. Yeah. Like yes, the two day thing is super 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 convenient and I love it. That's why I continue to pay for Prime. But at the same time, nothing that I'm gonna buy on Amazon is so like bleeding necessary like if i need it today 
I will go to the local store and get it if I if I'm if I can. Like right. nothing I ever order online is so essential that I need it in two days. So I think that's fine. fair. I just think it's really weird and, though that they're like estimating it a month out when it's an Amazon Prime item. Like it's actually it actually says think, it's in stock. I think it's I think it's um you know under promise over deliver. Like they're gonna tell you it's gonna take that long deliver, but like they're, they're gonna, gonna do everything they can to do it faster. Really, they will try to meet their normal uh you know their normal deadlines, but they just want to have it. They want to prepare you in your head, like hey, this is probably gonna take a while, but then if you get it quicker good for you you know you know what i'm gonna do right now is i'm gonna go to amazon i'm gonna go to amazon's website right now live on here and i'm gonna add a dildo to my shopping cart uh, miss barnacles if you're watching don't push checkout okay all right so there we go so we got <laughs> an 8.5 8. incher I, got, I found an 8.5 incher realistic with veins okay oh, it's, it's life it's uh true to life so yep it comes it comes in black and white i'm of course gonna get the black one because it's three inches longer and it costs like less so add to cart Okay, let's see. Delivered by, oh, wow. Okay, so free delivery by April 29th. And let me see if it changes. Oh, the white one's out to May 2nd. Okay, so the black dildo's April 29th. So now let me add a pipe wrench. Okay, let's do the pipe wrench now. So I just want to grab their their highest rated prime next day delivery pipe wrench. And the delivery time is, oh, May, May 3rd. Not not crazy, crazy. May 3rd, It was it's out a little bit further. But like yesterday when I did it, it was like May 18th. So at least they've improved something. They've changed something since yesterday. But that just goes to show I can get I can get the, the I can get the beef nib before I can get the pipe wrench, dude. So that's that's the world we live in now with Amazon. <laughs> uh, I don't think I added that to my cart, though. I didn't I didn't want to risk Miss Barnacles running in there and checking out and being like, oops, oops, can't return it now. Essential item. <laughs> Oh, I just got a message from my friend. Oh, wow. My friend Bill Duran from Punish Prop. He's like, I keep seeing you pop up all over the internet with this microphone thing. Hope you are doing well. <laughs> Dude, I'm like, I went viral on Reddit. I went viral on 9gag, whatever the fuck that is. And yeah, I'm serious. I've never been on 9gag, so I don't know what it is. I'm just guessing it's like 4chan. Um, and, and they steal memes and shit. 9gag is, is like imager, but. Oh, got it. Repost. Got it. Yeah, so I've yeah. showed up everywhere. I've been getting so many messages from people that are like, holy shit, look what I found. Look what I found on like every platform, Vimeo and stuff like this video made the entire cycle around the entire interwebs. But That's like, so cool. it's all other you're people. Famous. Just, you're yeah, famous now, Jamie. Famous. Hey, man, round two, right? Round two, bitch. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> oh, Miss Barnacles said uh, it doesn't work like that. Well, how does oh. it work, Miss Barnacles? Could you explain to us how the how the beef nib works? We need we need we need some details here, young lady. <laughs> Do you think that that's an accurate representation, though? Beef nib. Do you think that's a safe a safe way to say that? I don't. I don't think they would add beef beef nib to uh, the the filter, the content yeah. filter on YouTube. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> Somebody uh... said nine gigs AIDS. Oh my god. Oh. Oh. But anyways, yeah, it was funny because only two people out of like the thousands of posts that made the rounds over the course of two days, only two people tagged me, and luckily one of the people that tagged me was the two million hit clip on twitter so a lot of people were able to find me i think i got like an extra like two or two thousand people <laughs> followed me on twitter or something like that because of it it was pretty cool oh miss barnacle said we have separate accounts i can't just check out your cart oh that's good to know actually <laughs> that's good to know okay well i don't have to be so i don't have to be so careful when i'm adding things to my cart to yeah right them. except i'm pretty sure mrs barnacle does the books man she's gonna be like why is there two thousand dollars and where did this 55 gallon drum come from yeah, she is. She's pretty on top of it. Like the couple of couple of days ago, she walked in. She's like, what is browsers? And I was like, well, don't worry about it. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. She wouldn't care anyways. Actually, she would if I didn't get it on sale or something like it. have to, If I paid like full price for it, then she'd be mad. Um, <laughs> All right. Let's see what a bit next day. <laughs> I was always like, Ixnay on the Bibs nay. I think I did that right. Pig Latin. Uh, JCF data said Barnacles nerdgasm. Is it, uh, is it so you can surprise your wife with gifts? Actually? Yeah, I did buy a lot of her gifts, uh, for Christmas on Amazon. And in hindsight, I didn't really think about that. But then again, she told me what to order most of it. Uh, but I didn't think about that in hindsight that she probably could like at the time I thought she could check it. So she could have just went in there and just checked everything. 
So I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna be more careful in the future. Um, yeah, Miss Barnacle is the boss. I, I want to be clear here, just so because so I don't have to sleep on the couch again. Miss Barnacle <laughs> is the boss of me. Okay, I want to make that perfectly clear, and I submit I submit to her authority. Um, she 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 does she does own and operate me. I am I am a piece of equipment with a serial number of sixty nine, and, uh, and 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 she she runs the show. She runs the show, and I want her to know that publicly in front of everybody. <laughs> happy wife, happy life, man. Dude, that's true, man. What, what's the opposite of that? A- angry wife, uh, stabbed with knife. Right, I think something probably like works. Crazy. Something like well, that. Plus, I think, I think uh, even on the paperwork, right? She is, she is the boss, right? She is the boss. She is. Yeah, she is. So she is the captain. It's not just. Uh, it is actually. The yeah, she is a truck. she is a fifty percent shareholder in the company, and if I remember right, I think she's either the C- CEO or the CFO. Um, she's one of the two. So, and she's, she's the only one that knows anything about the business. She's the only one that knows where all the numbers are for the business. She's the only one that talks to the bookkeeper people. So realistically, I have no control. Like I said, she's the captain. She's the captain. I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm Captain Phillips just pissing down my leg. Although not, yeah, I, I am the captain. I am the captain. <laughs> oh, speaking of which, dude, here, here's, here's, here's an interesting thing. So I've been watching obviously a lot of YouTube lately. I think a lot of people have sure. since we're all stuck at home. And uh, if you go outside, you get hit by a sniper. Be like, oh, so you don't want to do that. So, uh, so, right so, oh, is it really? I don't even hear it. Uh, it, was, it was for me. Filtered out by RTX. So, uh, so anyways, I've been watching a lot of YouTube and I found this really funny channel. And I don't remember the name of the channel, but these videos kept popping up in my feed and I kept watching them. So they kept putting more and more of them in my feed because YouTube does that, right? They're like, he likes this. Yeah. Let's keep doing it. Have you seen those videos where the dude goes on the lobbies and acts like he's some like African uh, like rebel or something like that? Oh. And, and and like he gets on like there and stone, he, like Stone Mountain kind of thing, kind of Stone Mountain. But he's like this. You he acts like he's like a Uganda terrorist. Oh, and, dude, that's and, and, he, and he gets on there and he goes, hello, hello. He's like, he's like, you will kiss my feet. You will kiss my feet. And they're like, no, we will not kiss your feet. And then he goes and doxes them and gives and uses all their information. And he's like, he looks up their IP addresses and figures out that where they live, goes and finds their Facebooks and stuff all in the background while he's, he's heckling them on stream. And he conceals the details so that you don't hear it on the stream, but he freaks these people out. And then at the end, he'll be oh. like, haha, I'm joking, but God, you should hear like, he finds these people that are just That's racist. Shit, man. Dude, they're racist as F. And he's like, I'm going to come to your house and I'm going to kill you, Billy. And they're like, how do you know my name? And then he like says their last name and then he senses it. And he's like, this guy knows my name, mom. It's coming to get me. He's like, yes, you hear me, Billy. You do what I say. You do what I say. And we, we be okay. But he says it in like this really fucking creepy voice. And oh God, it would, I'll, I'll, I'll post a link on Twitter. Ooh, when man, I watched the next like, dude, it is when I watched it, I was like, how is this shit not getting like flagged? Like this dude's yeah. entire career is just, do- but he doesn't say anything in the video. He, 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 uh, he shows you how he does it, but he censors everything out. So he like shows you what websites and what tools he uses to like trace their IP addresses. And then he shows how he uses their IP addresses yeah. and their names, to, like trace back a chain of custody to their, their Facebook. He also showed how to, he went into a bunch of dark web databases and found leaked passwords for Facebook. And he'd go find the players in game that had those Facebooks. And then he'd hack their Facebook live and send pictures that they were sending to girls and stuff to their mom. Like, dude, oh. it's, it's just, it's freaking crazy. It's so freaking crazy. Does anybody know who I'm talking about? And the video is basically like playing like modern warfare or whatever. And then they just have like this like animated like Ugandan terrorist guy who moves his lips with the audio. And it's oh, God, it's so fucking creepy, man. It's so creepy. Let's see here. If you like that, you need to watch LT lick me. It's the same thing. What the oh, uh, Nigerian Prince said it's scripted. It might be scripted because I find it hard to believe that he can find data with that level of accuracy. But it's well, still it's still amazing to watch, though. It's like it's really well done, especially if it's a kid, right? A kid playing, like, say, on the Xbox. Yeah, the account or like if, if you're sniffing the Internet connection or whatever, it's going to show up as their parents, not the kid. Right. 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 Yep. And so it probably he, is staged. Let me see here. Uh, still, let me see. It's, it's cool. It's cool to kind of put that together, even if it is even if it is like. Oh, here, I found it. I found it. I found it. I found it. It's, it's, uh, it's virtually vain is the channel here. Like here, I'll just let you listen to some audio here really quick. So let me see if I can get this audio to play through here. And we get demonetized. Probably. Let's see. Last name included. Call me the ghost app, but I'm going to. Hold on. Wait until they're in a game. 
Come on, get in the lobby, dude. Oh, oh, scared the shit out of you. No, that's not, okay. That was a shitty one. Hold on. Black Ops 2. Here we go. So, How can I be like you? Do you wish to join me, Casey? Hmm? Yeah, thank you. Such a creepy voice. You all of your desires. <laughs> <laughs> all you have to do is promise me your soul. My soul? Oh. I don't hear nothing. Oh, you don't hear anything? Hold on. Let me see if this comes there. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm Oh, you have to listen on the stream. You have to listen on the stream. Oh, okay, okay. All you have to say is a kindly bit. I promise you my soul. Yeah, I don't know if I'm gonna say that. I, I feel like you're like just the devil on Call of Duty right now, and you're just waiting for some no, kid to say yes to Call of Duty. Right. His voice is so creepy. <laughs> Me to a party. So. Oh. Well, now I can't even do it in the stream. Any, anyways, oh. the, the guy is called the guy is called virtually vain. So here, I'll, yeah. I'll, 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 I'm gonna post because I've been watching these lately. They're just so, even if they're scripted, they're just so huh. fucking creepy, dude. Uh, here, guys, I, I, I put them in chat so if you guys can go check them out later because it's not coming across right because I can't screen share um, right now. But no, basically, this guy, he does this like really, like you guys could probably hear that on stream, I'm guessing, where it's like, it's just a super, super deep voice and it's like this total like Ugandan like commander. Like super authoritative, super bassy voice, and he gets on there, and I mean, he gets like hardcore in some of these videos, dude. He's like making these kids like piss down their leg. He's like, he's like, he's like, if you if you do not give me your gun skin or something like that, I will hunt you down, and I will, you better sleep with one eye open or whatever. And the kid's like, you don't know where I live, and starts calling him racist names. And he's like, Billy, I know where you live. The voodoo tells me. The voodoo tells me where you live. And then he says like his mom's name and his dad's name, and then he calls their phone, and you hear their phone ringing in the background on the thing, and he's like, answer the phone, Billy. It's me. I'm calling to take your soul. And then ah! and they just freak out, like drop their controller and scream. So funny. <laughs> Kill me, and then the guy just starts laughing. He's like, "Oh my god, this is so much fun!" And I'm like, "How is this allowed on YouTube?" It's so it's so hilarious, but at the same time, I really hope it's scripted because this guy does like really, really mentally fuck with these people. He there's even one video where he hacks a guy's webcam. Like he figures out he's using like this this Nest webcam that you can just log into without a password. And so he uses the guy's IP address. He connects to it. He gets the, he has all these tools that are basically just checking the IP address for any kind of vulnerabilities. And so he finds this guy's nest thing. And he's like, he just, he starts describing the guy, how he looks. He's like, you're so scared. They're about baldy. You're, 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 you're baldy or whatever with your glasses on thinking you're so smug. And the dude's like looking around like what, the, like, what the fuck's going on? And then he's like, you see that closet behind you? He's like, the voodoo is in there. It's going to get you. And the dude's like looking back at his closet door. And he's like, yeah, I'm in there. Do you hear me? Dude, I'm gonna come out and get you. <laughs> and he does the really creepy voice. And the guy gets up and goes over, and he's like, he's like standing in front of the closet, and he's afraid to open the closet door. And he's like, he's like, do not open the closet door. It will let the voodoo out. The voodoo will kill you. And the guy's just like tripping balls. And then he calls nine one one on the thing. And he's like, I got a guy on on the internet. And he knows where I live, and he's saying he's in my closet. And he's gonna kill me or whatever. And the guy's like, haha, I'm just fucking with you. And then he leaves the lobby. <laughs> like, how is that on YouTube? How? That's awesome. How is that on YouTube? It's got. It has to be scripted because there's no fucking way like you could put that on YouTube and not get it flagged. Huh? Oh, I'm talking about virtually vain. It's a it's a YouTube channel where this yeah, guy. Yeah, I have to check this out. This is cool. yeah. It's just a dude that goes he goes around and joins lobbies and pretends that he's like a Ugandan terrorist or uh, you know like like some really high profile you know you know like osama bin laden type and he basically just scares the shit out of these people because they'll start out like making threats to him and they'll be like you ain't gonna do shit and then the whole time while he's threatening him and messing with him he's like investigating their ip and looking for like vulnerabilities and then once he's done he'll like figure out like what area they live in and then he'll get them to confirm it like through a cold read and then he'll like dig down further and further and further and get more information until he basically knows what their name is their address their phone number and everything it, it's it's pretty fucking crazy Actually, that's yeah, true. Sure that is true. UWU fun. said YouTube allows police shooting videos. Yeah, so I'm pretty sure like they'll allow <laughs> just about anything. Justin said YouTube isn't very good at policing content. Dude, tell me about it. Did you see what happened last week with the, with the freaking child porn thing, dude? So okay, what? let me ex let me explain this because unfortunately we didn't get to explain it in full detail on my other uh, on my Twitch stream, but uh, so. This 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 vlogger family and let me I don't want to sensationalize this like this was on purpose. I genuinely believe this was an accident, but it's still fucked up how it played out. So 
There's this family called the Lebr LeBron family, and they're big. They have like 11 million subs or some shit. They're these family vloggers that are like Jesus is Lord, you know, and they're always dressed in like their little like white clothing and everything, and, you know, the mil the millionaire right. lifestyle. And so, uh, so they do they do they do a lot of clickbaity videos. One of them was like, oh, my daughter gets to meet Ariana Grande, and it's like literally them just having an impersonator on the phone act like Ariana Grande. It's like it's wow. all clickbait. It's all clickbait. So a friend, of I don't watch him. I don't know who these people are. One of my friends messages me, like actual friend in real life, messages me who watches them. Her name, oh, actually, I won't say her name in case she doesn't want to be known in this whole thing. But uh, she's a personal friend in real life and she watches vloggers, right? That's her thing. And so she sends me a link and she's like, I, can you help me get this video removed? I've been trying to get this video removed for like three hours. YouTube's ignoring me. The content creator's ignoring me. And she sends me a link and I open it up. And it's literally uh, like, a one second thing in the video where the daughter jumps on the bed in front of the camera and she like spreads her legs wide open and it doesn't appear that she's wearing any underwear. This like seven or eight year old daughter. And I'm like, holy shit, this needs to be taken down immediately. Like I freaked out. I was like, fucking I'm hitting YouTube on every Twitter. I'm, I'm getting everybody to flag the video as much as humanly possible. Still, the video's up two hours later. The video's up. It's gotten 200,000 views in two hours. So it, the video is just going up exponentially. I'm like, get this taken down. Finally, YouTube's not doing anything. YouTube finally steps in and says, okay, we're investigating, but then they never get back to me. I give them all the information. I give them screenshots with the with shit censored out and give them the time indexes. YouTube's like, oh, we're currently investigating this. Now we're out like three hours. Nothing's happened. And I'm burning like my whole day on this. My mission in life is to get this video taken down. So I want to be clear. I don't think it was on purpose. Like, I really don't think it was on purpose. I think it was just they weren't paying attention when they were editing the video and they left something in that they shouldn't have. Uh, but anyways... Um, I, I report it to YouTube. They don't do shit. Finally, I'm like, fuck it. I'm just going to go to the source, the creator of the video, right? Because YouTube ain't doing shit about this because, you know, they're their 1% golden child. So they're not going to do nothing. So I finally go to the creator and I message him through his business email. And I said, listen, your daughter's genitals are exposed in your video at this thing. You need to take this video down immediately for the safety of your family. Um, I, 30 minutes later, I finally get a reply back from the dude. And he's like, oh no, actually my daughter's wearing uh skin colored, uh, uh, underwear, or something like that. And I know it doesn't look like that in the video, but yeah, we, we wouldn't let her like be in the video without underwear. Uh, thank you for letting us know. And I'm like, right. did you, did you really just say like, even though your daughter's wearing underwear, that's like, that plays, even if it looks naked, even if it wasn't, it's, it's inappropriate as fuck. You need to take that down. And he's like, no, 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 it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Well, anyways, my friend, uh, I think she called the police and got them involved. The police went to his house and talked to him. And then all of a sudden, I don't, I haven't replied to him yet. I'm not, I'm, I'm fuming. I'm like, fuck this. This guy, like, honestly, you're not going to take your fucking video down. Your views are more important than exposing your stepdaughter. Uh, so anyways, uh, he, he sends me another email like half an hour later. And he's like, oh, on, on second thought, we've decided to remove this from the video. Um, the editing process is underway. It can take a couple of hours for the edit to take place. Thank you again for warning me and protecting my family or whatever, you know, basically turned 180 degrees. I haven't even replied to him. I haven't talked to him. He, now he's hitting my DMS on Twitter. The dude's just like going fucking crazy. Cause I think the cops came and talked to him. He didn't say that, yeah. but, but the timing was perfect. Right. The cops said they were going to go over and talk to him. And then a half an hour later, he's all over my shit. So anyways, he says the edit's in place. I messaged him back. I said, dude, the video is still public. He's like, oh yeah, well, I can't do anything about that. Well, the edit's taking place. I said, you can delete the video or set it private. And he's like, yeah. oh, well, uh, 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 my editor, my editor is the only one that can do that. Let me see if I can get a hold no, of him. Nothing happens. That so is bullshit. I replied back to like him. My last reply to him. This is the only <laughs> thing I replied back to him is I said, you mean to tell me that you're 11 million sub channel. You do not have access to your dashboard to set a video private. I said, I said, is that, is that how this is going to be? And the reply I get back from him and five minutes later is check. The video is now private. And I checked and the video yeah. is private. And then I just reply back to him and I said, thank, thank you for finally doing the right thing. Um, and then after the edit was done, then he removed that segment. It was like, I think he removed like 10 or 15 seconds. Um, then the video was up because he didn't want to lose any views. He knew, he knew that if he said it private, sure. he'd lose views or it was, and it was going viral. Every video they upload goes viral. Cause it's like super clickbait, you know, every like two, three days. And, yeah. uh, but I was really disappointed in how YouTube handled that. I was really disappointed in he handled that. I was surprised. Like we literally were flagging the video with the time index saying this is child. This, this is child exploitation. Like everything that YouTube had, we were flagging, like we need to get this video down and YouTube wouldn't do shit. And to give you an idea, I flagged other videos like that before that I've run across. And when I flag them, they get taken down immediately when it's a small channel. It was because they were a 1% partnered channel with 11 million, 11 million subs that YouTube like basically just ignores the flagging system entirely, like until they can get a human on it. And because of, uh, you know, the, the human malware, uh, nobody's eyes are on anything. 
And, and so I sent like five pages of information, like all the conversations with the creator. I sent it all to YouTube th that they could put in the report. And I still have not gotten a reply back from YouTube other than the one reply that says we are currently investigating this. That's it. Nothing else. So, so that, that's really, really sad that, you know, any channel you can get a video taken down. If it's a small channel, you can get the video taken down immediately if you flag it for like anything. Like they'll take the video down and they'll investigate and then put it back if, if, if it's a false flag. But if you have 11 million subs and you're in the 1% bucket, no, you can just do whatever the fuck you want and, and nothing will happen. So yeah, they have 11.5 yeah, million subscribers. And yeah, they already got another, they've already uploaded two other videos since that. When they upload a video, it looks like about every two, three days. And every video is like 2.6 million, 2.3 million. The video that, that meet, meeting Ariana Grande, they literally take Ariana Grande's picture and put her in the thumbnail and she's not even in the video. It's a, it's a, it's totally fake. And then they did another one where she's like, she got to meet somebody else and they faked that one too. But all the videos are just total clickbait. It's, 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 it's sad. It's just, it's just fucking sad to see this. I don't like child exploitation. I don't like, I don't like seeing these, these family well, vloggers pushing their kids and fucking and scripting their kids into everything. It drives me fucking nuts. What's the... With the Copa thing, isn't that aren't they supposed to be a hell of more strict about like the content that contains children for that for that exact sort of reason? Yep, but like, they're not. They're not. All they're doing is uh is uh disabling comments and likes and dislikes or something. They disable a couple of things on video if you're a family channel. Um, and that's it. Wow. That's it. And and they have sponsors. Every one of their videos. And I'm not I'm not gonna kick them for sponsors. Like I understand you need sponsors in this day and age to like keep going. But it's like every single video, like every three days, like, oh, today's video is sponsored by, you know, Raid Channel Legends or today's video is sponsored by Dollar Shave Club. <laughs> and it's like it's a family vlog. Like it's a family. Every family vlog sponsored by somebody because it gets like two million do views. Think, do you think I could get a Dollar Shave Club uh, so, sponsorship if I like if I just use their razors to like catch the edge of my beard? Totally. Or like to totally, like trim dude. my mustache. Dude, Dollar then, Shave Club have, uh, is hard up for people. Club. Yeah. Dude, really? I, dude, I, mean, I get Dollar I Shave Club shave. barking at me about every week. I get a I, I get a marketing company hit me with Dollar Shave Club, and I'm like, guys, I shave wow. like once a month. Like, I have no testosterone. When I did shave, like, I I threw down the ten bucks or whatever for one of their little boxes, and like, it's it was. I mean, this was probably six six plus years ago. Um, it was quality stuff. It was it it was at least on par with my um the triple blade Gillette razor that i i had used since i was 18 uh, but nothing hands down nothing beats the old school double-edged safety razor for the best most cleanest shave you will ever get hands what down. is what is what is a safety razor double-edged safety razor uh it's like it's like the kind of razor your grand grandpappy used to oh is this like the thing that they flip out in, <laughs> in like tarantino movies for like cutting mm. people's throats or what is that that's a straight edge okay um uh, but you'll you'll recognize it when you see it. Um, if you j just Google real quick, double edge safety razor. All right, let's see here. Um, and, and you'll you'll be like, oh yeah yeah, I know. What you're talking about. Oh yeah okay and, yeah you're right you're right. See? Those are the ones that you actually put like a proper straight edge razor into. It's like one razor yeah, it's blade, got right? The, it's got the, it, the the blade is really really thin and, and flexible. And usually what'll happen is the the top of the of the handle will yep. unscrew. You place the blade on top, and then you screw it back down, and the blade actually kind of bends to this perfect, this perfect angle, and and they're usually pretty hefty. It's it's a pretty weighty razor. Dude, the blades are super even, cheap and super sharp, super sharp. Like you, like I, even the cheapest ones, man, are like laser sharpened or something. They will cut your finger clean off if you're not careful. They are wicked sharp. Yeah, I was but gonna like, say these don't look safe. Like they can't call that safety. It looks like if you go sideways with this thing, it's gonna you need stitches. <laughs> well, the 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 sharper the blade really is more safe safe. But but dude, just the weight of the of the razor itself will is is enough to just give you the cleanest. I I always did two passes, one with the grain, one against cleanest smoothest shave of ever ever no bumps no no ingrown hairs it was Ooh, i might amazing. have to give that a try because they're not they're not expensive i'm looking here it looks like a really high end one's like 18 bucks and the razors are like a dollar yeah like, man you'll get you can get like a hundred blades for like 10 bucks and that'll last you like i changed mine out every two weeks um I mean, obviously. <laughs> well, you you grow hair at a slightly faster rate than I do, sir. <laughs> you could probably get by like at least a month. Well, plus there's two sides, right? So like, yeah. you know, and 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 yeah, deep hands down, they're so great. I actually, my brother got me a really, 
really old um, Gillette safety razor handle from like the 50s. And this comes in this cute little brown and stuff. It was really cool. Yeah, I'm looking at one right now for 17 bucks called a baby baby face <laughs> safety razor. And it's like all it all looks like it's milled from aluminum. And it's like like you tension it by screwing the end of the handle like it's a modernized version of it. Yeah, I'm like, dude, this is actually pretty cool. It's got really good ratings, too. Huh? I'll have to check they're, this out. But great. man, I, I I'm one of those people that I even cut myself with a regular razor. Like I like the, the ones don't, that like have been. Move. Don't move side to side, man. It's up and down. No, but what I'll do is I'll have like a little, a little tiny like mole or something, and I'll be like, uh -huh. and it just, it just wax the sucker off, and I'm like, oh god, and I always forget when I'm doing it. I'm glad I don't have to shave that often. <laughs> hey, JCF yeah. Data, thank you for the twenty Canuck dollars. I appreciate it. So Jerry and Houston, here's a little something for you guys. Don't forget Miss B cut. Don't worry, she always gets her cut after YouTube takes its chunk. Of course, so excited to see you looking pretty happy, Jerry. Also, a pleasure seeing you as well, Houston. Oh, such a nice, such a nice gentleman. So, so okay, the big experiment is going to happen right now. Oh, looks here like we my go. my lady here. Do you want to say hello? My hey, boss. what's up, girlfriend? <laughs> <laughs> so it looks it looks like they're about to leave. So I installed I installed this really neat. Um, so we're gonna see. Yeah, thanks to Jerry, but but um, we're gonna see if it, if if it cuts out the garage and the car and all that stuff. It's gonna be super cool. So mm -hmm. so you guys know our uh, Houston has RTX voice enabled. We did it earlier on the stream. Mm -hmm. So on right now his 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 girly is gonna pull out. Oh, I don't I don't hear it. I don't hear the garage door. I don't hear it. Okay, now now the car is going to get started up and back out. Yep. And that was the garage. And you guys didn't the hear the door at all? No, nothing. Dude, it That's was completely amazing. silent, man. That's amazing. Dude, that is freaking awesome. Nigerian Prince said, what brand is your nothing. current headphones? Oh, these are MDV6 Sonys. MDV6 Sonys. They're awesome. You got like a woodworking no, shop no. going on in the background there? <laughs> I love it. Oh shit, we got Tal Floutermouse in the house. That rhymes. Do you know who he is? I've heard the name. There's yeah, the he, car starting. He makes oh, we just heard the beginning of it. That was it. It's cut out now. Nothing. And it's running. And it's 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 right next to you. Yeah. yeah, we can't see it because it's cut off in the in the stream. But yeah, it's right next to you. Okay, hold on, it's backing out. Nothing. Don't you hear the tires? Don't you hear the engine? That's amazing. Nothing. But here you fine. You're coming through perfectly clear. The door's closing? Right? Yep. Oh, heard just a tiniest little bit, but nothing, nothing even significant. Okay, that's really cool, man. That is a cool demo. And that is a loud ass, cranky metal. Like, yeah, they all are. They're, they're they're terrible. And I'm I am flabbergasted. That is so. I I'm just how fucking cool, dude. That's really cool. Hey, it's good to see you, Tell Flattermouse. I've been watching your videos for a long Tell time, dude. Mouse. Yeah, he uh he does a lot of uh he does he does a lot of gun videos that aren't gun videos anymore because he figured out he figured out a loophole to the YouTube system. It's actually pretty fun. He uh okay. So what he does is like he, he what, what what do you what do you call it? Like per, you don't call them projectiles or something. You call them something something else. Uh, they used to be like bullets, and he but now he just doesn't show the gun. He just crops the gun out. Uh, oh, he said, can you turn off RTX so we can compare? Yeah, here, turn off turn off your RTX oh, I'll, if I'll, I can go I'll hit the garage this, door. I'm do it now. Okay, okay. Oh, no, because they want so, a comparison. They want to see how loud this bitch is. Okay, so then now it's off, and I'll, yep. just, I'll just hit the button. I'm going to set my headphones down and just yep, hit the button. that's fine. All right, here we go. He didn't turn it off. I can I can still hear it cutting out. Yeah, he still has the effect on. He didn't turn it off. Cuz I I don't think I don't think the effect was turned off, dude, cuz we couldn't hear anything. I I unchecked the box. Oh, is it is it the box unchecked? Here clap. Do do the clap. Now, okay, so it's 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 checked now. Okay. Oh, turn turn it uh Okay, so you got the slider at 50%, right? Yeah. Put the slider at 100%. Uh-huh. 100%. I, yeah, now, now go now go do the garage door, but have the microphone facing toward Okay, there we go. It's not where Okay, so now now face the the Oh shit. No, now turn it off and do the clap again. Sorry, we're getting this all messed up. So do off. the do the clap. Okay, there we go. Now Wait, I still can't hardly hear your clap. Here, clap really hard. 
Dude, I can't even hear that. Oh, there it goes. Oh, I know what's happening. I know what's happening. We're are seeing it here. Are you No, are no, you I, I know exactly industry? what's happening. It's taking like 30 seconds for it to disable the effect because you're on a GTX and not an RTX. That's one of the things people reported. Oh. Was it when oh, you okay, disable the wait. effect, it takes a long time. So now we know. Clap. Okay. No, it's still it's still filtering a bunch of it out. Okay, there we go. Now now go to the garage door. That's weird. It's like sometimes like we hear it, sometimes we don't. I think that microphone and the headset might have noise canceling enabled. Uh oh, hang on, hang on. Maybe Oh, here, I maybe bet you have uh, noise suppression voice, enabled. Voice voice meter and has a noise gate and compression. Yeah, oh, so okay. that that's going that's going to mess with the effect. Yeah. Is that better? It's yeah, it's better, but we still can hear it a little bit. Here, I'll just oh, here. I'll so do weird. it. I'll do it on my side. T Tough ladder mouse here. I'll do it on my side since I don't have I don't have any compressor or any other effects. It's just RTX. Yeah. So this way you can get you can get a pure sensation of what it's doing because uh, I think Houston has some additional stuff added. But here's here's what the effect off with the leaf blower. So now you can hear what it sounds like with the leaf blower on. And don't ask me why I have a leaf blower in my room. I'm just weird like that. But now when I enable the effect here, give it just a second. And this is what it sounds like with the effect enabled, with the leaf blower going. So I think this is a better demo than the garage door. But uh, yeah. that's a noise-canceling mic that you have. It's directional, and it's noise-canceling. Oh, and yeah, you have a compressor be... and a limiter and all that stuff, so it's kind of sure. defeating the purpose a little bit. So, right. but but yeah, it's uh, it's it's pretty damn remarkable how well this thing works. Hey, what's up, Kiwi? How's it going, buddy? Sir, if you wouldn't yeah. mind taking the reins of the show, I gotta I gotta run downstairs oh, and sure. use the tinkle pot here really quick. Sure, sure. And That's fine. Uh, I'll be back here in just a few minutes. So please entertain the troops. And All right, uh, let me see here. You got this. You got this. I'll be right back. <laughs> All right. Using the RTX output device. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Is like maybe it might be it might be some, I mean, I have like I have echo cancellation on in Discord. Um I have I have quite a bit of uh software stuff in between. Um, you know, because I'm in the garage and whatnot. So, um, but it, it is a incredible piece of technology. This RTX voice thing, it is outstanding. I highly recommend y'all give it a shot. It is freaking cool, really cool. All right, what do we got here? Love the epic beard. Oh, thank you, Gold Tiger. Um, let's see here. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. You store food in your beard like granola bars? No, I'm I'm constantly brushing it and getting stuff out of it. I don't I don't um, usually usually it's crumbly stuff like granola bars. Actually, not too bad. It depends on what it is. Um, rice, um, mustard and stuff from sandwiches often, especially in my mustache. <laughs> yes, I still work with people. Let's see. Yeah, so I got a response from a senior partner a couple of days ago. He said, he said, can we work on the product before we work on the name? <laughs> That's funny. Um, do you decide it on a day you will shave? Yeah, the day that I get $10,000 directly um, donated to me. Um, doesn't the beard annoy you? No, actually, I'm not really conscious of of it most of the time. Um, yeah. What are you doing in the garage? I tell Barton Clays to say hi. Uh, so my lease, uh, where uh, where I used to stream from, was my office. Right, my lease is up soon, and um, so I'm I'm moved in with my lady uh, while we wait for our house to be built. Uh, I have to battle with uh, my mustache. Yeah, yeah, that's probably the worst. That's the most annoying, and it's like a three on the annoying scale. It's really not that bad. Um, you know, I'm constantly kind of pulling it off to the side. Um, thankfully, I don't eat my mustache as much as I used to, but I do I do still get, like, sauce and stuff in it. Uh, it's like, a flavor like, saver. Like, I, I can't eat s'mores anymore. Like, I, I, I hands down will not eat a s'more because the the marshmallow, the melty mallow, gets all up in my mustache and then dries up, and it's, like, rock solid. I have to go – if I eat a marshmallow, if I eat a s'more, I got to go wash my whole face. I got to wash my face. And so. Uh, Dude, do you, want me to 3D, do you want me to 3D print, like, a special tunnel? 
that you can like put in your mouth and has like a little s'more tunnel that you can like <laughs> it's like a like, dental dam yeah yeah like like you put it in like a snorkel and you bite down on it or whatever and then it just has like a little funnel that comes out and like a little ramrod that you can just stuff the stuff past your beard great dude that would be that'd be uh, a viral video if we did that <laughs> that'd be awesome <laughs> Be like, get get all your foods that you can't eat with a beard, and just do a video. It's like three three D printing solves beard beard eating complex. <laughs> I think I think it would be a yeah, genius yeah. video, dude. If you if, if if you're ever game, I'll I'll literally draw something up in Fusion three sixty, or I'll just go. You know what I'll do is I'll just go download like a funnel <laughs> off Thingiverse, and then I'll just lop it off <laughs> to make it a little bit bigger <laughs> hole. Wide, yeah. wide ended. Yeah, and then just print like a cylinder that you can use as like a ramrod. So you like put the s'more in there, you lean back, and you just mash at it to get it back in your mouth. Maybe even do it like a grid. Like put a little grid, you know, like French fry cutters? Put like a little French fry cutter grid so when you're forcing it through, it's breaking it up so you don't have to chew as much. Dude, I think we can solve the world's problems one 3D print at a time. Dude, we could sell that shit on Etsy. Oh, man. Yeah, that would be great. Hey, dude, honestly, if... If we made a video on that, we printed out like twenty of them and signed them oh, and just put them on my merch store on Shop. People would buy them. People would buy them just as purely oh, yeah. a gag. Oh, for sure. So That'd we just got to come up with like a clever name for it, like uh, ah, beard blocker. Yeah, beard beard blocker. Have you ever wanted to eat a s'more with a giant beard? <laughs> it you is, actually look like Doctor Robotnik there for a second. <laughs> it's kind of weird. The foods that I have to be conscious of. Man, I mean, but, you literally have to suffer for your vanity, dude. You have I to mean, suffer. It's, it's not so you bad. You do. Like, me, not so much. The most um, salsa, chips and salsa. Like, every third chip, I end up getting some salsa in the beer. There's like nothing. It like drips and then bloop as I'm like going to eat the chip. Dude, I feel like it's these weird. are problems we could easily solve. Like, not even be, just with 3D print. Like, what, what, if, what if you just took, like, you know, that silicon oil? They use for like lubricating uh-huh. things. You just spray your beard before you eat chips and salsa, and like, like, or or like some aquaphobic like shit sprayed on there, so the food just like, drips and just comes. Yeah, rain X that some bitch. It just like you're eating food and it's just like fly like like you're eating pudding and it's just globbing, but instead it just goes like this and just slides off. Dude, that would be hilarious. I think we're onto something. My beard, the beard bib. I love it. Oh, uh, dude, the beard bib. What if we? What if we did that? What if we like just three D printed? Like we scanned your face because, like, I could three D scan it using a, and then and then print out a thing that's perfect with your mouth here that covers your beard and put a strap on it. <laughs> so you put a strap around your head that perfectly <laughs> outlines your beard and it curves in just a little bit to your mouth and it just is like a, but it looks like your beard. And then we can even paint it. We can spray paint it to make it look like your beard. And you can wear that shit at restaurants. Oh, that'd be great. Dude, it's every awesome. one of these is a viral video, man. I just got to get you over here and we got to do it, man. Yeah, yeah. It'd be easy to do. We could use, uh, what's that one, two, three D catch on the cell phone where you basically, I just have you hold still and I like, could just go around your head and I can mm, actually create mm-hmm. a 3D model. And then we could just take the beard from the 3D model, right? And then just make a plane and 3D print the plane. And you would actually have a shell that would fit perfectly around and over your beard. <laughs> Dude, it would be hilarious, oh, man. It's great. It's great. And you keep your beard about the same size, right? So, yeah, yeah. I, I keep it trimmed this long, dude. dude I guarantee you I that, like, trim this would be my belly button, dude. The government, dude, that would be cool, though. You got to do that when you're like 60, though. When, when you're straight up like old crotchety, like uh, prospector, like when you're 60 years old, go. you need to grow that shit like down to your balls, man. Oh, man. Like, yeah. just don't get them tangled together because that's a weird hospital visit. <laughs> Well, that'd be great. <laughs> you walk in there, you're like, oh shit, ow, ow, my neck, my neck, ow, ow. Caught, caught up in ow. my, oh man. <laughs> oh my god, ZZ Top, yeah, damn straight. He's already pushing ZZ Top, and he's just a youngster. Wait, you'd have to do a tech talk together in the nerd cave? Well, no, we plan to. That The plan is, once all this shit blows over, I want to I oh, get a yeah. beard of Saurus Rex over here in the cave. Because yeah. I've got, I, need I've to got... Help, I need to help Jerry clean out all of his junk. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. I'll do all the I'll do all the tech reviews he never wanted to. See, that's that's all I got to do is just get, just give you all the shit that I never got around to and just let you do it. Uh, UWU said, although although I am I'm making a lot more videos, man. I I am I'm coming back to YouTube with vengeance. Uh, Woo! And, and I learned my lesson. My lesson is fuck production value, fuck everything. Just focus on content because yeah. no nobody yeah. nobody cares about your eight I'm, hours of editing to do like a three second effect. Nobody nobody I cares. Think, uh, I really think um, you've done so well at like staying consistent with Twitch. I think if you apply that same kind of mentality to YouTube and just kind of like you were saying, kind of remove some of that like perfection thought yeah. process and just I'm gonna put out a video once a week, regardless. Doesn't matter. 
and and just and just stick to that. I think I think you're onto something. Yeah, I don't even. Oh, good, my video is picking up. Nice. Uh, I don't even know where the perfectionist shit came from, to be honest. Because I'd never done that for my whole like eleven years on YouTube. There was never any perfectionism. It was just pick up a camera like like this. Like this was what yeah. I used to shoot videos. And like for audio, I might put on a lav mic or something like that when I'm getting really fancy. Mm -hmm. But but for some reason there was there was something that changed and I haven't really figured out what it is yet. Something changed. I don't know if it was a confidence in myself or something like that or just just depression and shit like that. But I started getting to the point where it's like no matter what I made, I made a lot of videos that nobody ever saw. There's a lot of like yeah. rough cut edits of videos sure. that people never saw because I just looked at it and I was like, you know what? I'm not proud of this. And man, I used to post anything, man. Some of my most famous videos are yeah. shit that I just, I literally just, I'm, I'm mad about something. I just turn on my camera. I'm yeah. like, all right, Microsoft, time to take you to task for some bullshit. And that video gets like a million views. And I'm like, but then I do That's the video it, where it's like, That's I go it. out and produce it. And you know, like the drone videos, I love doing the drone videos, but every time we go out there and we overproduce it, we learned really fast that they don't get as many views. Right. If we just if we just go I, out there and we just have fun, it works great. But if we go out there with a the whole production think, crew and everything, it, it flops on its face. Yeah, man. I think I would look at look at the the success of your uh, in the raw videos, right? Like how yeah, many people how many people those. not not to not to like you don't have to give out a number or anything, but just internally, like think of how many people are throwing down to see those. Like, you know, they, That's they true. there is an audience. There is an audience there for that kind of more rough like the raw real. rough content yeah 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 Thanks, and a lot I of people don't know I my patreon i have 260 videos that none of you have seen unless you're my patron 260 I think it's a it lot just reflects a bit more of of your personality too it does like it does like you're not it, it's a there's a weird disconnect there from with with like i feel like people don't expect a high production value from you and so when you do produce that kind of content, it, it shocks it's, them. It's like, whoa, this is weird. Like Jerry's, I watch, I watch Jerry's Twitch stream, and like, hey, you get, you got a pretty high level of production value there with the with the streams and the funny voice changes and stuff like that. But like, if that could be translated to the YouTube, I think, you know, it's just more, it's more yeah. of who you really are, and it's and it's easier, it's easier because it comes from the heart. You don't have to think so much about it. Like, that's why I love live content is because I can just go, 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 go. Yeah, there's no take have after to... take. When you record that yeah. camera, it's like even the, video, the last video I uploaded, I spent way too much time on that video. I could have banged mm -hmm. out that video in like 20 minutes in editing yeah, and it would have been just group, as good. Man. You were going at like three in the morning. Yeah, it would have it would have been just as good. But instead, I just I <laughs> like like even that last little bit. If you guys if you guys know what I'm talking about, the RTX video that I posted yesterday, that last little bit at the end where I'm like, this is my last clip that I'm putting into the project. I basically just do a, a you know, a, a record straight to camera. Um, I did that four times, four times before I got something that I was like, OK, that's something that I'm happy with. And I'm like, that's what I like about live streams. This is like you just do it and it's done and your brain can't yep. go. Oh, I want to retake on that. But when you're recording by yourself yep. in a room with a camera, nothing's good enough. And you're always like, oh, I can do that better. I can do that better. But the truth is, every time you do it, it's not better. It gets worse and worse and worse. It's like, just do it. Just do it. The straight one, one and done one and done. And that's what I used to do. And I don't do that anymore. And I got to I got to figure that shit out. I got to get back there. So but therapy has been helpful. Therapy has been helpful a lot. Um, one thing one thing therapy helped me with a lot was cleaning out a lot of really toxic people, which is really good. Like I was being one of those people where it's like I was sympathetic to everybody. Like, you know, I didn't want to offend anybody. I didn't want to make anybody upset. And I was like riding these rails where it's like nobody really enjoyed what I did because I couldn't talk about anything I was passionate about. Because I just get shut down I just, by there'd always be a group of people. But then I realized that no matter what you do, there's always going to be that group of people. So it's like, do you screw over the larger group for the minority group that's like really noisy and cranky? No, they can just go somewhere else. And when once I learned that and I started applying that forward, things got a lot better, a lot quicker. Mm -hmm. You know, you just you, the people that come in, it's like, oh, you got to do this and you can't say that you can't do that. Blah, 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 blah. You're going to lose all your subs. It's like, no, I don't care. Leave. Get the fuck out. And then for everyone that leaves, three more people show up that are like, oh, wow. OK, I kind of like this. This guy yeah. being being real, whether I agree with him or not. I just kind of like the idea that he's being real and he's being genuine. And that's something that I think is lost on on a lot of YouTubers. And I understand why they have to. Like, don't get me wrong. There's the people that have they have businesses, they have warehouses and studios and employees and payrolls and all that. I totally understand that in that case, you, you can't just go willy nilly like, you know, fuck, fuck everything you want to say. Right. You can't you can't right. do that. But uh, but in my position, it's like I'm a one man band always has been. Right. You know, it's like I, I am the uh, I am the captain. So it's like it's not that big of a deal if 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 I do something, it's like I can just own it and I can just soldier on. 
And now that I own that, I have a lot more fun doing it. I have a lot more fun doing it. Hey, ba Baylet Brand, thank you for the $2 uh, super chat. We appreciate that. Love your content and live streams. Well, thank you so much for the support. We appreciate that. Uh, Houston and I split the super chats from this show, so we do appreciate you yeah, guys showing you some support. Uh, let's hear uh, Lendro, uh, sorry, Leandro Holly said Barnacles. I've been a fan of yours since I saw your cameo in Eugene Kaplan's indie film Cube. Wait, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. Cube never got produced. Are you talking about the pre-production teaser video where I where I pretend to open a door? I don't think that video ever got produced, did it? If Cube got produced and, and Eugene didn't tell me about it, I'm going to kick him in the balls because I don't think that ever got finished. It was an indie project that he was working on, and we were actually shooting rotoscoping footage like in a hookah lounge in Seattle. Oh, it was, shit, dude, it was cool. crazy, man. It was, it was a crazy experience. I really enjoyed it. But uh, but it never got finished. The cube. I actually printed him one though. He ha he has a three D printed cube, like one of the props for the the movie. If he ever does again, he actually has the only three D printed cube from his movie. Hey, William, William Gingrich, thank you for the two dollars super chat. He said, "Bring back the modded Minecraft." Oh my god, dude. How okay, so you're obviously seven hundred years old like me. Uh, years and years and years ago, I used to do uh modded Minecraft videos with a extension called Techit Techit Mod. That lets you do like really complicated things. And I used to play with my neighbor and a bunch of friends. And I'll be honest, the reason I got away from Minecraft is because it just became this huge toxic thing for like grown men to play Minecraft online. And that's one of those what? things that I pandered to. Like, oh, dude, like everybody that played Minecraft was instantly labeled a pedo and attacked. Like everybody. Oh, it was like fun. it was this whole cultural shift where it's like um, they found like one or two Minecrafters that, you know, that turned out to be pedos or something. And then all of a sudden, everybody that played Minecraft, if you're over 18, was a pedo. And I even got attacked for it, just playing tech it with my friends and live streaming it. Like, I was like, what the fuck? So I ended up just pandering and stopped playing it all together. And I'm sad because I loved Minecraft. I quite I quite loved Minecraft. I'd like to go back to it. Uh, Minecraft RTX, bro. Yeah, but I learned my lesson back then. That was back when I was trying to pander to the masses and I was always trying to do the right thing and not offend anybody. And now I'm just like, fuck it, send it. Like now in drama channels and shit, try to call me out on stuff. I'm just like, fuck you guys. Like, I'll do what I want over here. You do what you want. And you enjoy growing your empire. I'm I'm not gonna comment. I'm just gonna sit over here and do my thing. And it's been it's been really successful. I've really enjoyed doing it. Um, yeah, but those modded Minecraft videos. I think they're still up. I don't think I ever took them down. Let me see. I'm curious. I want to see if any of my old Tekkit mod. Let's see here. Barnacles Minecraft. Can you guys hear me when I type in? Because this is a really loud keyboard. Nope. That's crazy, dude. So I fucking love this thing. This is the best thing NVIDIA ever did. You know what? I'm going to go on record and say that I actually yeah. find this more useful than actual real-time ray tracing. Like, I would oh, buy an sure. RTX card for this fucking beta software that improves my live stream over anything RTX has done. Anything. Uh, let's see here. Okay, so Barnacles, Minecraft. Yeah, see, totally. see if any of these old videos uh, are up. Now it's your turn. Now it's your turn to entertain the troops. All right, dude, go, <laughs> go, go, drop trow, and I will see you in a couple minutes. Wow, man, these are old. These videos are seven years old. Okay, so my first time playing Minecraft, tour of my epic Minecraft man cave in the sky, forty minute raw, sexy, random tech at Minecraft shenanigans in Earth Five with commentary. My first time ever playing Minecraft Hunger Games with Spurkowski. My God, I did, I did quite a few Minecraft videos. I three D printed some Minecraft stuff. Oh, wow. Well, so if you guys do a search for Barnacles and my, somebody's got a lot of views, one of them got 247,000 views seven years ago. Holy shit. So, but yeah, I, I never took down any of the videos. I just stopped doing it. Uh, Josh Black, although I did see the new mod that came out for RTX, like the RTX Minecraft, and that's the first ray tracing experience I've seen that actually looks like it's worth trying. Uh, Josh Black, thank you for that $5 super chat, man. That's damn nice. You said update on the electrical box power thing you installed. And also Windows 10 still sucks. Yes or no. Love your videos. Be yourself. Uh, Windows 10 doesn't suck. I want to I want to be clear on that. Windows 10 doesn't suck because I run it and I will continue to run it. It just it has its problems. It's a little special. Um, So as far as the telemetry stuff, it has improved. Like Microsoft is being a little bit more transparent with their telemetry stuff. Uh, they've added a lot more configurability to disable it. However, I'll still stand by the best way to block telemetry is to do it at your router level, which I still need to do a video on. Um, as far as the sense, I haven't done an update of video on it yet, but it's finally finished its machine learning pass to identify the devices in my house. And it's and I'm going to be honest, it hasn't done that great of a job. Would I recommend sense for actually identifying all the devices in your house and like telling you how much power they're using? 
No, honestly, most devices nowadays uh, have uh, variable power consumption. And so sometimes they'll consume 100 watts, sometimes they'll consume 500 watts. When you have a device like that, it confuses sense and it thinks it's like 80 different devices. So for that, I'm not really interested in it, but it is actually pretty good at certain things. Like it knows my furnace and how much power it's using. It knows my TV and how much power it's using. It knows my microwave and how much power it's using. It knows my dryer. Um, anything that's a constant power load, like my uh, my uh, coffee pot, and they are doing updates to it that are making it better at identifying things. So it has identified a couple of devices that are variable power draw. So I know they're at least doing something in that space. But it's nice. It tells you when things are kicking on and when things are kicking off. And, and it's fairly accurate for is once you filter out all the garbage that it just adds, which takes time and it takes like a month to train. Um, it actually does give you some pretty good data and you actually get some cool trending data, too. So you can actually like see on there, it'll tell me like what my average power usage is, what my app, what my cost is going to be on my electrical bill for said power. I can create goals so it'll alert me when I'm like near those goals. Right now it says uh, in my house, things that are always on are consuming 733 watts. Other devices are consuming up to 2,700. My furnace just kicked on. It has drawn 1,300 watts. Uh, and the devices that it's identified successfully is my garbage disposal, my dryer, my espresso machine, my furnace. Actually, it identified three furnaces, so that's wrong. I have to remove two of those. Uh, the laser printer, it figured out on its own. Um, the microwave, it figured out on its own. Motor, I don't know what motor is, but it figured that out. And my Samsung TV. It actually literally figured out it was a Samsung TV. So their database is getting more and more information. Um, let's see, but but uh, I haven't done an update of video on it yet, because quite frankly, it's all over the fucking place. But that may be a reason to do an updated video on it, because, I mean, it, it, I think it'd be good to let people know that this just is not working that great. However, I will give it this. It is a great power meter. Like it does, it does accurately give you a representation of how much power all the devices in your house are using. So if you just want a monitor to tell you how much power is being used at any given moment in your house and like alerting you when it goes above a certain threshold and stuff like that, um, it's actually really, really useful for that. But the whole intelligent thing that they try to do with like the heuristic machine learning and shit like that, uh, it's not as good as I thought it would be. I genuinely thought it was going to be a lot better than that. And I talked to a couple other people that have the product and it turns out that they're they're, they're underwhelmed by its ability to detect devices. And I know Sense is continually improving their algorithm and their machine learning, and you send a lot of data about your appliances. So if other people have the same appliances, it can it can identify them. And last time I talked to Sense a couple of months ago, they did say that they were working on a new version that will better detect devices with variable power draw. But like stuff like my computer, it's never going to be able to figure out my computer because my computer is able, sometimes it draws 300 watts, sometimes it draws 1200 watts and every watt in between, which means as far as sense concerned, it's a thousand different devices, right? It just, it can't detect it with any level of accuracy. And I honestly thought when I installed it, it would be able to. Uh, but then again, you have to think about what it's working with, right? It's literally making all the decisions about what, uh, what devices are what based on looking at one current, like like the power coming into your house and going from your box into your house. All it knows is the power draw. That's it. It doesn't have any other information from that. And it's and it's able from watching that power draw and watching those little spikes and the sine waves and stuff like that when shit kicks on and startup loads and stuff. That's all the data it has to make its decisions. So if you base it on that, it actually does a remarkable job. But most customers aren't going to look at it and be like, oh, this is a huge technical feat understanding how it works. They're going to look at it and be like, this doesn't work very good, just period. And unfortunately, I think that's what people, the conclusion most people are going to come to. Um, I don't know what no other problem. solutions are I out agree. there. <laughs> I don't I don't know what other solutions are really out there. I, I think Sense is kind of a somewhat unique product, but there might be some competitors out there. And if there are, please send them to me. I'd like to look at uh, what they have to offer. Maybe they found other clever ways to identify devices, even if it's like plugging them in through some kind of box under the wall using some kind of X10 system. But the way I see it right now is there's probably if you if you need to if you need to accurately monitor the power consumption of specific devices, get something like a kilowatt and put it in line with the device in the wall. That's going to give you your most accurate like data logging and visual of that one device. Um, but sense if you just want to see what your whole house is using at any given time, you want to see when your peak power is versus your power during the day or what your power draw is when you turn on each component and how far it kicks up the power consumption. And just keep an eye on just like, you know, being aware of how much power and going around your house and finding vampire devices and unplugging them, see how much money that saves you. Sense is great for that. Like Sense does a good job of that, but it just, the, the heuristic identification of devices in your house, just, it just isn't there. And they've been around for about three years. So I would have expected them by now to have that shit like perfected down to like the, the, like, like one percent failure rate and it's not it's closer to like 90 percent. hey lord vader thank you for that ten dollar super chat he said thank you barnacles for great content well thank you so much Aww. for appreciating what i do 
Because at the end of the day, that's what motivates me. You know, I, that's what I said in my video the other day. I was like, you know what? I've been hovering around this million sub mark for like three years and I keep shying away from it. Like right, right when it starts getting to a million, I'm like fucking them out and I freak out. Because I feel, I feel like once you go over a million, it's like it's it's all downhill from there for some reason. I have no idea why I have that mentality, but, um, but no, I've I've convinced myself now that it's like no, that's my goal. My goal is to get to that million subs and to just keep on plowing on because I gotta, I I gotta bury, I gotta scratch that itch. You know what I mean? I gotta scratch that itch, and I'm gonna do it. Uh, let's see what do we got going on over in chat here. MLG Melon, what's up, dude? He said smart plugs like the Alexa or Google compatible ones. Some of them can give total power draw. In their apps per group or room, I have a bunch. They are fantastic. Ooh, I should look into those because I do have, uh, what is it, Belkin? I have the Belkin ones. They don't tell you what the power draw is, but they allow you to remotely turn on devices and turn off devices and tell if the device is on. Uh, but I'd like to see what the cost is on something like that. Because here's the thing. The sense cost, I don't know how much the sense costs. I want to say it's like 200 bucks. Um, and it monitors the whole house. But here's the thing. How many of those devices can you get for 200 bucks? Because at the end of the day, it's like I can put something on my box. Like I can go out there and just push put a multimeter on it with like two. Uh, what do they call those impedance connectors or whatever they are? Uh, and and I can I can see what the power draws. Right. I can rig something up. I can literally put a webcam pointing it, it like a little multimeter on there. You know, that costs 20 bucks on Harbor Freight and tell how much power my, my house is using. Um, I'm more interested in seeing what the individual devices are using personally. And I'd like to see uh, what an alternative is. Huh. Bitnick said, please read my question. Well, Bitnick, it's probably already scrolled off the it's, screen. So, so he so. says he says Apple, Apple is dumping Intel. Um, there isn't anything official about that. The current, the current generation Mac Pro still uses Intel. Um, in fact, Intel, Intel specifically made that chip for Apple in the, in the, current, um, in the current Mac Pros. Um, and then turned around and released it to the public because they they're, they're scrambling to try and make money off of the CPUs in the consumer space. Um, but I am seeing some talk about they. I know Apple has been developing an ARM based uh, CPU for a while now, and they probably are going to be moving to that eventually. Apple Apple's been trying really hard to not be dependent on anyone. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see in a few years that uh, Apple starts making their own GPU. Um, it, it'll be based off of an existing technology, though. One thing Apple always oh, does sure. is they, they always end up taking something that's relatively like open source and public domain, and then they just put their little spice on it and and put yeah. enough glue on top of it that you can't tear it apart and tell what it used to be. <laughs> so, yeah. so but, but I do agree with you on ARM. I really, really think that uh, ARM is the future. As a matter of fact, I think that Microsoft was on the right track with Windows RT, but the problem that they had there is instead of trying to build a processor and a system that supported x86 emulation, like, well, they decided to drop it all together and just say, oh, only ARM apps are going to run on this platform. And there just wasn't enough support for it. So people were just like, nah, I'm not interested. Yeah. Like, we don't care that the tablet has 12 hours of life if none of the apps we can run on it are any good. Um, but with ARM technology where it is today, I'm actually surprised that we even bother with x86 and x64 architecture anymore. Like, it seems like... Like, honestly, with ARM, you could build a device that's just as fast. Now, granted, you have to recompile everything and you have to rebuild everything to work on an ARM architecture. But if you did that, yeah. it would be so much more power efficient for the same amount of, of basically horsepower. And right. and the only reason they don't do it is because it's really difficult to get an entire ecosystem to move. It's just like when I'm on Twitch, you know, I might get 500 viewers where, you know, I live stream over here. And, you know, sometimes I can get like 2000. Like if I just bust open a live sure. stream, like driving around in my car, right? And it's it's because the audiences don't like to move. They get they get complacent where they're at and they like the features and they like the environment. Right. And they get married to their platforms. And that's the same thing with ARM. If, if Microsoft could snap their fingers and say, listen, Adobe, uh, Steam, all these different like huge components of their of their ecosystem, if they could get them all to move laterally with them. So to an ARM right. platform then they'd be highly successful in one generation. Boom. Everybody's on arm. Everything's more power efficient. Everything's faster. Cause you know, you could have an arm processor with like 600 cores if you wanted to. Right. I mean, you can, you can expand out damn near infinitely and they just don't do it because the companies are like, well, we got so much time and money invested into the current system and it's making us money right. and everybody's already running it. There's really no, the, 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 the pros don't, or sorry, the pros don't outweigh the cons. So that's why right. we don't have it yet. But yeah, no arm is amazing. Like a Mar arm is an amazing architecture. It's why people still use Macs when you can still get tremendously better performance out of uh, regular Windows PC hardware because they're just too, most of the time at least, too 
invested in the ecosystem. They, they've either A, been using it for forever and they don't want to change, even though your keyboard shortcuts are basically the same. Yep. Um, you know what a good but demo like, is? I have an iPhone. I have iCloud. I have yeah. a, it's the I ecosystem. Message, I have everything. And I don't want to have to cobble something together with Google and, and other other software things to just, you know. And the other thing, too, is, like, you could actually have a way slower, pro like, a way slower product that runs a software package faster than the better platform. And, and that's what Apple's really good at doing. Like, uh, was it Final Cut? So, so Final Cut, yeah, their video a, editing software, like, uh -huh. you could have their shittiest laptop with, like, an i3 processor and almost no memory. And you can scrub yeah. like 4K footage in that thing in real time. Like if you ever see somebody on a MacBook with, using Final with Cut proxies with well, yeah. fair <laughs> enough. With pro but but it, but the proxies are a part of the workflow, so right. so it just happens right. magically, right? So they right. figured out how to optimize the software for the platform. Whereas on a PC, you have something like Adobe, and there's so many permutations of hardware they can't optimize right. for them all. So they just optimize for the one that they're like, okay, we're gonna people that build editing rigs are gonna have an SSD and this type of memory and this processor, and they're gonna have this SKU of Windows, and they're gonna. So they optimize for that, and then everybody else gets kind of a slightly skewed, weird experience compared to the baseline. Whereas on Mac, it's all the same. So they optimize for one platform, and it's optimized for everything. And that's what yeah. Apple's really, really good at, is building uh, basically shitty, cheap hardware into faster perceived experience. So, like, you put a MacBook down and a PC laptop. One's running Adobe Premiere. One's running Final Cut Pro. The PC dies, like, six hours earlier. Um because it doesn't save as much power. It doesn't look as good. It's not as smooth of a UI. And you look at it, but, but all the specs on paper look better than the Mac. The only difference is the Mac is completely ground up optimized for that experience. Like the company exactly. made the editing software. They made the, the circuitry. They know the timing of the threading. The operating system is designed to give them exactly what they need when they need it. And you don't get that kind of like synergistic relationship with Microsoft, uh, the PC builder and the software builder. They're all three different entities, whereas Mac, they're all the yeah. same. Um, let's see, what do we got up here? GTPC gaming. What do you say? Oh, did you already answer him? Yeah. Okay. Oh, the, there was just, uh, what did he say about something about AMD? Uh, so the Apple AMD rumors come from an OSX update containing AMD integrated graphics names and other stuff. And so they, they are, I was saying Apple is already invested pretty heavily, um, into their GPU accelerated stuff. Like the Mac pro comes with the special dual, um, Oh shit! What are they calling it? I don't know. It's got some Radeon something something in it for their and they're and they're definitely invested into metal um, as um, as the alternative to CUDA, right? It's not OpenCL anymore or whatever. It's metal they're calling it. Is that what AMD's um, doing? Uh, yeah, yeah. They're uh, I think they're it's like their flavor of OpenCL. They're calling it metal, I think. And I'm I'm totally I could be a little off. This is just like. It's, it's going to be just like FreeSync, though. It's not It's not going to be backwards compatible no. with NVIDIA. They're just going to try to create their own thing like they always no. do. No, no, no. Oh, Apple really? and NVIDIA are, are fighting. Like, they they hate each other. Like, oh, shit. Apple and okay. NVIDIA are, are, like, angry, angry people. Like, you can't. That's why since, what, it's been two, I think, two OS up, uh, OSX updates now, um, you can't use NVIDIA graphics cards. Like, it's completely locked out. You have to use. Oh, I didn't hear about that. Stuff. That's that's fucked. Yeah, that's that's why the new Mac Pros are all using um, Metal is a graphics API like that. That's for Apple. Okay, okay, not my my. Um, yeah, it's it's uh, and so yeah, they're they're definitely they're definitely back in the AMD horse. I could see Apple moving to AMD processors, even their CPUs as a as a stop gap if they are going to follow this ARM stuff. Um, because dude, this latest generation of AMD CPUs has been incredible it, it completely just destroys the the intel processor that they have in the pro right now it's it's insane you can get you can get a 3950 3960x and it will crush that high-end intel cpu it, yeah i've just, been hearing the amd is just like knocking it out of the park yeah the graphics card still kind of suck but um what but I don't understand, CPUs. so here, here's what I don't understand is why is it AMD? And I'm guessing it's got to be price or something like that. But every fucking console uses AMD graphics. Everyone, I, the Wii, the I Wii U, Xbox 360, yeah. Xbox One, Xbox Series X coming out, PlayStation, PlayStation yeah, 4, I, PlayStation 5. It's all fucking AMD. All of it's AMD graphics. Yeah, I don't know where they, they, they must have just glabbed onto that early on. It's like it was way back in the day. It's all AMD graphics. And then like, how is AMD uh, not the NVIDIA leader? Doesn't want to do it. 
It must be. It's got to be something like maybe NVIDIA is being too greedy or something like that. But I just I've never understood that the NVIDIA like dominates the PC market, like specifically the Windows. uh, Let's say the Mm -hmm. Windows PC market. They completely dominate that market. But AMD dominates literally everything else. And Windows 10 is designed with the same kernel as their is their uh, mobile platforms and their gaming platforms, their console platforms. So it would make sense that if they're designing the Xboxes with AMD chipsets, that most of the developers that are building the games for the consoles are probably going to work better with AMD technology on the Windows platform. But why is that not the case? For some reason, NVIDIA still fucking dominates. and I don't get it. It doesn't yeah. like as a software developer in me, it would make sense that if everybody's developing for consoles that have AMD technology, that even if they were doing it through DirectX, like DirectX 12 and everything on the console, that they would still favor that technology and optimize for that technology huh. on PC too. It seems weird that they, they do the opposite yeah. for PC. They go with NVIDIA. So only thing I can think of is NVIDIA is just so much better on a windows PC than anything AMD has that they just got a foothold or at least a temporary foothold. We, we all know that can fall yeah, apart in like two seconds though. So. Yeah. Yeah. It's gotta be price though. Crazy. It's it, it has to be price because, or, or it could be power too. Cause I know NVIDIA stuff isn't very power efficient. Like right. e- even with um, cryptocurrency mining, I've noticed AMD has always kind of yeah. been the superior product for uh, power yeah. consumption versus mining. It really must. It really must be like a licensing thing. Some people are saying PS3 was Nvidia, the Switch is Nvidia, but but yeah, everything else. Wait, wait, um, wait, wait! The Switch is Nvidia. Apparently, uh, apparently, yeah. Oh a, shit! A, I didn't know that. Okay, if that's the case, that completely breaks room. my argument. Let's see here. Switch graphics chipset. Yeah, Nintendo's new Switch revision may feature a Tegra X1 T214. That was back in 2019. Wait, the Tegra, though, is a CPU, not a GPU, if I remember properly. Uh, Dude, I'd laugh so hard if it's an AMD GPU and it's an NVIDIA CPU. I would laugh so hard. Let's see. Uh, No, it says uh, it's basically a Shield Android TV. Oh, got it. Okay. Um, I actually have powered it. by a 256 core GM 20B Maxwell GPU. Look at that bitch! That is a first generation. There you go. That's a first generation He's shield that, that hasn't been turned on in like three right years, dude. I need to plug this shit uh, in and Intel, charge it. Intel lost its ground a long time ago. Um, I wouldn't say that necessarily. They've been they've been slowly picked at over the last like I would say five years. Um, so, eh, less than that. So don't really, underestimate brand loyalty. The original, so the original, when when Ryzen first was announced, what was that, four years ago now? Five years ago? It's been a while, Um, hasn't it? It's been been a day. um, That was the beginning. They they didn't, so the original, the first gen Ryzen's weren't there. The second gen Ryzen's were a little closer. This generation, only just recently, since, I would say since November of last year, AMD is now at the top of the heap when it comes to CPUs. Um, Intel's, I feel like Intel just got too big. They, they were the, the top of the keep for, for so long. They, and man, there's so many weird things. Their marketing is all out of whack. They're super out of touch with the consumer market. They, they're hanging on, they're hanging on with their, with their heavy metal stuff, their enterprise, you know, stuff. Their consumer market is, you know, it's, it's. Man, it's just crazy. They're so they don't out of advertise touch. at all, so though. Weird. You ever notice that, like they Nvidia and AMD? That, oh, is that what it is? It's just that they're they're I mean, the only two. Ferrari doesn't advertise either. You know. <laughs> I mean, kind of. The, well, I suppose. Yeah, you don't see you don't see like Ferrari commercials. Like, come down and buy your Enzo. It's like you get picked by yeah. Ferrari to, to right. buy their like, car. The, yeah. The, the people. The and it's just still can't be Intel on gaming. I would disagree. I would super disagree. I would like if. Look at the this no, cur- current generation. The third gen Ryzen stuff is 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 it's cheaper and at least equal uh, per performance. And a lot of gaming is going to rely more on your GPU anyway. Yeah, and that's where Nvidia dominates. Dude, I, I, you could you can be sitting on a forty seven ninety K with a ten eighty Ti and be rocking some shit. <laughs> well, the way I see it is I, I literally sell a T-shirt that says AMDs for poor people. And I'll even tell you right now that everything I've seen shows that AMD just fucking mops the floor with Intel. Like just it's, decimates. It's, it's there. it's, there's no yeah. there's no competition right there. Like Intel has to they they have to spin a new generation because you cannot compete with seven nanometer. You can't like Intel does not have seven nanometer. AMD does. That means they're going to be more power if they're going to be more thermally efficient. They're going to be faster. 
and and they're cheaper. That's what that's the thing I didn't get is I thought AMD going to seven nanometer would make them have to bring their prices up to like Intel level. But no, they're yeah. still the cheaper option, like by a bit. So yeah. my next system will definitely be an AMD box unless Intel somehow pulls a rabbit out of their hat, which I'm not sure that they were prepared for AMD to like come out with what they did. They yeah, they really weren't. Um, and and even still, it's like, um, oh, I lost my thought. Never mind. Yeah, it happens. <laughs> disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> oh oh, um, PCIe 4.0. Um, only AMD for right now. Um, the Intel doesn't plan to support PCIe 4.0 until the end of this year, uh, at best. That's which, a big deal. Considering, That's... considering the fucking supply chain problems that Intel's been, ha- and, and I'm sure it applies to everybody, really. But like the the problems that Intel's been having just supporting the CPUs that they already have announced, like, and and part of it I'm sure is the coronavirus, but like, it's also that they just they announce things that they don't actually make, that they don't actually produce, that they aren't actually shipping, and and then they're like, oh, hold on for thirty days, sixty <laughs> days, ninety days, while we try and ramp up production, and it's just it's that's just what I mean when I say they're out of touch. Intel is just like flapping their wings all over the place, and it's just fucking crazy. Yeah, they, they became complacent. They just became complacent. Companies do it all the time, though. Microsoft with Windows Mobile. Remember the Windows Mobile phone that was like largely unchanged for like five years? And then the iPhone comes out and it just looks like pure unicorn magic compared to it. Yeah. It, they they yeah. could have been innovating all those years. They just didn't because they didn't have any competition. Intel felt like they didn't really have any competition. They're like, oh, AMD, they're this tiny little like shit log of a company. We have way more money, way more market share. We control the enterprise and all this. And then AMD is like, hold my beer. You know, and yeah. and really gave them a thrashing, and they weren't expecting that at all. Hey, Darka, thank you for your uh, 10, 10 pounds, sir. He said, oh. I bought an AMD gaming PC, and it was a piece of crap. Kept on switching off, when? and the company I bought it from didn't want to know. Uh, well, that's a shitty company. And when did you what what generation AMD? I'm curious. Well, I'm guessing it was a piece of crap because it was switching off. But and, I'm curious. That, that's not that did AMD's you buy fault. It from I buy power. Did you buy it from Cyberpower? <laughs> did you buy it from Main Gear? Did, did yeah, you did, you bu- from, did you buy I'm it from sorry. the cheapest denominator? Did you yeah. Go to Walmart. I'm yeah. sorry. I'm, uh, Dude, I, I saw got, the Walmart PC videos. So the Walmart PC That's videos are priceless on YouTube. Oh my it's, god. It's ridiculous. Do they open them I'm up sorry, and like none of them have what they're supposed to? Have you have you seen that? Like the YouTube unboxings of the Walmart PCs? Yeah. Every yeah, single one of them. Like they open it up scam. and they compare it to the sheet, and it's like whoever they have building the PCs, they must just be grabbing parts off of shelves. Because they never like sometimes hey. they have a better graphics card, sometimes they have a worse graphics card. They never it's, have what's on the sheet though. It's a crapshoot. And so like, hold on. I, some people are oh, buying pre build is just garbage. I would highly disagree. Um it really, really depends on who you're buying from. And, and like, I'm a bit biased because I work for a, a boutique PC manufacturing company here in Washington. So I am a little bit biased, but there are companies out there who do the right thing, who know what they're doing. And no, no, no. And like, I ain't even, I ain't even trying to suggest that you buy from the company I work for. Like, I, I try really hard not to mention the company that I work for. I do this on purpose because this whole thing is not related to my job, my nine to five. Right. But, and and I would even say I would even say not even the company I work for for gaming. Okay, I'm gonna throw that shit out there. I would I would look more toward other people. Um, Falcon Northwest is a great company local to uh, to be just a couple hours south of here. But there are companies who do the right thing. What about have you have you heard job. anything about Di- Digital Storm? I've heard of them. Um, apparently they're a pretty decent a of... liquid cooling building. Like they, I think they're more of a liquid cooling gaming machine builder. Um, yeah, like pri- their prices like... are pretty high too, though. I mean, it's like they're, you're going to, you get what you pay for. Right. Uh, in a big way, actually. Yeah. 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 If, 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 put it um, this way. If you were, if you were getting something super, super cheap, that means that whoever's building it isn't getting paid very much. That means whatever components are going into it were bought at a discount, probably because they were widely available. There, there's a lot of factors that go into it. I'm not saying that you can't get a good deal, but just realize that, like, if you're like, oh, man, this computer specs are amazing for this price. Yeah, crack it open when you get it in the box. And trust me, you're probably not yeah. going to think too much of it. And, and yeah, I don't know. It's just there are there are companies who do a good job. There are companies who will. Who yeah, Miss Liz said she bought from Dell. But, Dell. Dell, if you just want just an out-of-the-box, mass-produced PC, why not? So, um, but, yeah, yeah. Um, You'll be upgrading it much, though. Do, 
<laughs> definitely do your research. Um, and and if it's just gaming, like you could probably pick anybody. You throw a dart at a wall. Oh, I have a Dell sitting right here. There, there, there's a Dell um, for you. Look, look at that son of a bitch. But I'm I'm just saying, like pre-built pre-built is still a decent way to go. Um, it, it, I don't know. It, it always it always comes back around to the argument of time. It's always time, right? You, you know what you're, else you can do? That's what you're spending more for. I, I, I have What's another that? suggestion, too. And this is one of the things that even though I know you don't like to talk about your business, um, I can because I'm a customer. <laughs> sure. <laughs> they uh, One thing I like about Puget Systems that I don't see from really any of the other builders, and correct me if there's another builder that does this, but they publish all their research and all their information yeah. publicly for everybody, and they encourage people to build their own shit. So, like, Puget's like, here, we're going to tell you everything that we do, how we do it, like, all the secret sauces on Puget Systems' website. Like, you can go through and see all their benchmarking, what components work well together, what components don't work with certain software packages well, how things benchmark, how to do bios. They just give all that shit away for free, yeah. and and they'll even encourage you. Like, if you've got Which, the time and you got the resource, go build your own shit. Use their information as a guide. By the way, like, like I, I've that's something I, I've... One of the reasons why I like working for them is and tell Don I love him. Very like much, Don Don needs very to hear much I love him. Why? Right? They answer the why question yeah. a lot because I look uh, back back when I was a lot more plugged into. Um, I wouldn't even say competitors, honestly, because we're, they target Puget targets a different kind of market than basically every other PC manufacturer out there, except for like bots. Um, is is you would see you would see these these other like high end, name brand boutique builders origin main gear visual storm cyber power they would immediately have the newest thing and and be be pushing the product without really explaining yeah, no research. why 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 are you pushing a thread ripper Blah 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 for or what or actually I, that's 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 unfair. Nobody nobody was pushing Threadripper for gaming, but like why why are you immediately jumping on the newest AMD processor Ryzen two twenty seven hundred K or whatever twenty seven hundred X? Yeah, it's like just because it's new. There was no explanation, no no comparison to their other product. There's no reasoning behind. And and basically the only thing you could tell was like because it's new, and 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 it's like SEO or something like they're just pushing it because um, because it's new. It doesn't yeah. like people people will often approach Puget Systems and be like, hey, when are you guys going to start selling this thing? How come it's been like it's been out for three months? How come I can't buy this processor from you guys? And it's because we have they haven't um, they haven't tested it. They haven't said that this is makes sense for our customers. That we haven't gone through. Well, plus no, nobody offers that level of, of customer support because if you just sell everything all willy nilly, then you have to support that shit. Like a good example of that is yeah. my Clevo laptop. Like for a short term, oh, Puget dude. did laptops. They fucking abandoned that shit because they're like, listen, Clevo wouldn't do what they wanted Clevo to do to bring the quality up to a standard that they could support properly. So they're like, fuck it. Yeah. They just scrapped the whole thing. I mean, I can't even imagine yeah. how much money that costed John to do. But he was yeah, like, fuck it. it. It ain't good enough for us because we, we need to be able to support yeah. everything that we sell and for like life. Like and we I, have to actually stand behind the ship for mentality. life. I love the idea that like that Puget Systems has a very limited part selection for a reason. We want to they oops, sorry, I should I should be using different pronouns here. They <laughs> want to provide a a certain level of support, a certain experience to a customer, and they can't do that if they just if they just sell everything that that they can that that is available. Right. And and that's why there's you. That's why you can't buy an i3 processor from Puget Systems. That's why you can barely ever buy an i5 processor from Puget Systems. It's because it it a it doesn't provide the work experience that the are uh, that their customers demand, and b it just is more product to have to purchase, support, keep on hand, and and everything else from top to bottom, a slimmer more more narrowly focused uh product line provides a better experience over well plus plus you guys actually just have the testing data that's the that's the biggest thing right is it's like everything yeah. that you guys put into a computer you know exactly how it's going to act how it's going to react and with all the software suites that people are interested in in a professional space 
I mean, like you yeah. said, I mean, they're not they're not a gaming PC builder. Can they build a gaming PC? Hell yeah, they can. I game on yeah, this sure. shit all the time. But but their focus is building super, super stable and quiet and 24 seven rock solid platforms for getting work. Oh, done. and, and that's a huge that's a huge part of it, too. Future systems will get a lot of crap for like, hey, how come you're not using, you know, 4000 megahertz RAM on the AMD yeah. processors? You're, you're totally hobbling them. And well, for one, AMD does not recommend that. Okay, their official their official like support doesn't say to do that. Yes, you can run it, but that that's not the right thing to do. And and like it's unstable. Like okay, oh well, it only crashes you know three percent of the time. Well, three percent for somebody like Pixar is thousands and thousands of dollars. Yeah. So. <laughs> no, I know I I know the people. I mean, obviously, can't, I can't say, but I. Up- I know the types of people that run Puget Systems rigs, Sorry. and I'm shocked by who they are. Like the you guys being this like little boutique. Well, I don't even want to say little. I mean, you guys are decent size now, but it, but still, you're like a little family operation. And yeah. I've always loved that. But the fact that some of the customers that you guys have, like in the in just the computing space, like the raw scientific computing space, is like fucking mind blowing. Like the people that just happen to like find them by reputation. And so it's, yeah. it's, they have a good reputation, but at the same time, I've always respected them because they give you the knowledge to build the stuff yourself if you want to. And their, yeah. and their, their job is to say like what they want. When I, when I talked to John, it was all about selling a computer to somebody who doesn't want to build it themselves, wants something that's rock stable 24 seven. It's going to handle their workload the best it possibly can. And they're going to have the support that they need if anything goes wrong for like the life of the system and upgrades and everything. That's the person that they're selling to. They're not trying to sell to the person that can build their like build their own stuff. If somebody can just build their own stuff, they're going to just do it cheaper and build their own stuff. But I've always thought that it's cool that they just put the information out there because I don't see any other builders doing that. And I always thought that that was interesting. I was like, that's you literally have these people on staff that are like PhDs. And uh, like you know, like sci- what what is, what is Don again? What's his uh, his designation? Uh, theoretical chemistry. Oh, oh, his. I was gonna say his PhD is in theoretical chemistry. Uh, if I recall correctly, I might be a little wrong on that. Um, but uh, he's our in-house scientist. He specializes in machine learning and and high performance computing. Dude, I sat in on a meeting with him long time ago. I don't, I don't remember if you were in that meeting or not. I, I don't know if you were back then, but I sat in a meeting and Dawn was in there and they were talking about a problem with uh, Intel's architecture, I think it was with Haswell E or something like that. Haswell or Haswell E. There was some weird yeah, fundamental problem. Team. Yeah, that they had to fix with CPU microcode. And I remember Dawn coming in there and just like going like buck wild. Like on all the details of like how all the testing that he did over weeks to like find out like exactly what the CPU was doing and how it trips up. And it's like he figured out the flaw more than Intel did. Like like Puget was like instrumental in like giving the data back to like get that shit worked on to get it fixed. And Don's just like, I mean, it was so over my head what he was saying. This is back when I was, you know, still freshly out of Microsoft. You know, I was still keen on all yeah. this technology and 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 lexicon. And he and he blew my mind. So I, I thought it was really cool that they have somebody on payroll that has that level of passion to just dig deep into shit, like really dig deep. And uh, plus I like the fact that like every, when, when I went there, they didn't say, what do you, what, what do you want? Like when, when they built my first computer, my dual Xeon down here, they didn't just say, Hey, what do you want? Because if they did that, I would have been like, man, I want a liquid cooled this with these graphics cards and this and this memory. No, they sat me down. They're like, what are you going to do with this computer? I'm like, well, I need it to run Adobe Premiere and I need to game on three surround monitors. What are you using for your monitors? What are you using for this? What are you using for this? And they specced it out and they're like, this is what would best serve for this scenario. And I'm like, okay, wow. Okay, so dual Xeon. Why why, Why dual Xeon? Oh, because you're running Adobe Premiere and you're doing virtual machines. So you can offload onto the second CPU and you can use the primary CPU for this, this, this. I'm like, okay, that's cool. Uh, why not water cooling? Oh, because we can get to the same level of performance and more reliability off of the air cooling. Oh, yeah. oh really? Yeah. Like, really? And uh, actually, this is one of the coolest things John ever said. And I'm sorry if this turned into a little bit of a Puget commercial. I haven't done yeah, anything with this, the. Uh, yeah, I don't mean this to be. I know, a commercial guys. Or, I haven't done Puget anything play. with Puget, Puget Systems uh, for what about two, two and a half, three years now? I don't think I've done anything with them. Uh, not since the machine that's behind. Yeah, you, this is this. Yeah, that was built in I think 27, early 2017. But uh, I still stay in touch with John, and and the coolest thing that he that, that really got me when I first saw him, I was actually introduced to him by Fractal Josh, if you guys didn't know about that. Went over there, as John mm-hmm. said, listen, he's like, let me build you a computer my way. And he said, if it's not, if, if it's not everything you need, I will build you a water-cooled system. But let me prove to you that an air-cooled system can be just as good, if not better. 
He's like, I will build you a quieter system that that runs more stable and and does all this without any liquid cooling necessary. He's like, we've got the shit down. We know how to do the. We're gonna put noise shit on the case. We're gonna put ducting in it. We're gonna use special fans. We're gonna we're gonna get the shit. He said, let me do it this way. And if you don't like it, I will build you a water cooled computer. Even though they didn't build water cooled computers, that like wasn't their niche at the time. Even, even yeah, and in, in even even when we do, it's AIOS. Okay, that makes sense though, because you're building stuff in like compact space, right? So you have to get the heat yeah. off of it. So yeah, and, and yeah, I thought it was cool that he said that though. I just thought that was one of the neat things. It was like that was one of our first interactions that we had when we were talking about uh, doing a little bit of a collaboration. Is I told him what I needed in a computer, and he's like, he's like, hold on, I want to I want to walk you through like the experience. This this is what I think would work best for you, and let's compare that to what you think would have worked best for you, and let me explain why this is better. And and some of it was like weird stuff, like uh, that I vaguely remember, like the M2 drives. The M2 drives that he right. selected for the build weren't the the top speed M2 drives that like you could get, but he had explained oh. that the average read write speed or something was better on the slower drive. And for what I was doing in Adobe mm -hmm. Premiere, that would actually yield a better result. And I was like, yeah, because early early on with uh, Samsung M2s would um, they'd overheat. Oh, that's um, right. You guys also put uh, heat sinks on them. Yeah. I remember it, that it he voided the warranty and put a heat sink on it because they said that they would rather eat the cost if the if the SSD died. They would rather eat the yeah. cost by permanently putting a heat sink on it than risk it failing in a customer's and, and machine. Even, I thought that was yeah, cool. Yeah, it was, and thankfully they they really did a good job with that in the in the next generation. I think it was like moving from the eight eight hundred series M dot twos to yeah. the nine hundred series M dot twos made a huge dude. Mistake. Storage is so fast now. <laughs> like it's like. Uh, I think storage is probably one of the things that has moved at a, at a faster, like, uh, evolutionary pace than almost anything else. Like, cause modern SSDs mm -hmm. now can reach what, like six, seven gigabytes a second read, write Or some shit like that. Yeah. I think SATA three is six gigabytes. Yeah. Cause I think Optane was the only thing that could do that. Like what, two years, two, three years ago, Optane was like the only thing that could do that with its own dedicated PCIe. 3.0 slot, you know, card and everything. Now, now these like new and modern M2, like I think PCI4 ups that too, doesn't it? If I remember right, I think PCI4 oh, yeah, gives actually, you way more bandwidth. The, the next generation of Optane, I believe, will only work on PCIe4. I hope that they fix the booting issues though. That's why I didn't, because that was another thing I wanted when, when we built one of my computers. I was like, oh man, I want one of those darn fangled 768 gig gigabyte Optane drives because it's so fast. And John's like, no man, they, they don't boot right. They got all kinds of fucking issues. Like, no, it won't be, it won't be very long until there's no difference between your, your RAM memory. And your yeah. Everything's yeah. just going to be non-volatile memory. Be, yeah. It'll all be the same. It, it'll be all wicked fast like that. And then you're going to start seeing like enormous, like just ridiculous amounts of cash as well, you know? Yep. And yeah. Yeah. Dude, won't, won't that be, cr I wonder, well, here's the thing, like though, I'm not so sure that that's going to happen anytime soon. Cause I think memory is progressing at, at the same pace as storage, right? Like non-volatile memory versus volatile memory is there. Yeah. Like one is always way, way faster for some fucking reason that, that I haven't really looked into. Yeah. Um, I'm but it seems like with the cost, like, well, the cost now kind of sucks. But but when memory's at full production, it's come, <laughs> it, it it did have the potential to come way down to the point where you could put a terabyte of, like, actual volatile memory inside of a mm -hmm. box with a power supply that maintains it. And yeah, you could have, RAM drives, kind yeah, of. and you basically have a RAM drive. You have, like, the as fast as the bus can possibly write to it. And, yeah. I mean, that's probably not realistic with today's prices, but but right. I always thought that that was kind of cool because back in the server days, man, that was a big deal. Like, I remember we had a... Oh, yeah. At Microsoft in the big in the big machine lab, we had a eight U Intel Bear system, is what they called them, the Intel Bear, and it had uh, cards in it, PCI cards in it that just had banks of memory, so it's, uh, yeah. like sitting at an angle, and there'd be like f like four cards in there, and they'd be completely full of of dims, of memory dims. Wow! And it, and it was to give it like 128 gigs of volatile storage, and then each card had a battery on it, not like a not like a button cell, but like a proper like lithium ion battery <laughs> that would charge off of the bus and and maintain the memory when the system was shut down. So basically, you used it as a hard drive. It, it was like this weird rated hard drive setup, and I remember that just that storage, like for 128 gigabytes of volatile memory back then, I want to say it was a hundred plus thousand dollars for it. And it's like today, what 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 does it cost you to do like 128 
Gigger under a thousand or under a thousand bucks. Oh, easily, easily. <laughs> like, I would say four hundred dollars, maybe. Yeah, it's, cr- it's crazy how much cheaper Ram yeah. is getting. So if it keeps going on that scale, they'll eventually hit a point where they're just like, oh fuck it, let's just let's just put a Ram drive in your computer. Let's just boot your computer off volatile memory and just maintain it with. I mean, it doesn't need a lot of electricity. I mean, you could maintain that for potentially years with a battery, oh. right? So no, I was super wrong. What? <laughs> uh, twenty six sixty six. I'm just seeing fifteen hundred bucks. Oh, for that's for a w- one for one stick. Oh, one stick of one hundred and twenty eight. Yeah, that's gonna it's, it's gonna go up exponentially. Thousand dollars maybe depends what, who you get it to. Let's see how much is uh. Let me see thirty two GB DDR. What is it uh? uh four, DDR four thirty two gigs. <laughs> four sodiums. Yeah. Four thirty two gig sodiums for a hundred. <laughs> so yeah ram, i mean memory is cheap and it's exp- i i as i understand it it's it's expensive it's more expensive now than it was uh was it last year or something wasn't there like a big fire or something that took out like a memory plant oh, and set them back a lot yeah, have dude, they recovered uh, from that i'm i'm sure i'm sure um yeah i'm looking at memory yeah, dude it's like a rough. 64 a 64 gig stick of g skills trident royal series memory still like 300 bucks so two of those, yeah. so six six hundred bucks, and you got insanely fast DDR twenty six sixty six that they claim can it, it can overclock. Like I don't know what are they saying right here? PC four twenty one three hundred, whatever the hell that means. Yeah, this is like the fancy stuff that they're putting like golden. Di- <laughs> they literally put That's diamonds Jesus, on it. Like what the fuck is with yeah. RAM oh, and trying to make real. it look all it's dolled so up? Weird. I don't know. Man. I'll never understand this. Like the the I, I can't handle it. It's so weird. I don't like. I personally don't like all the. I like looking at it, right? It's like. Well, yeah, it's it's, it's, like, it's pretty to look at. I'll give you that. It's like the hot rod thing. I don't want to do that to my car. I'm not gonna pay somebody to do that to my car. But it's super cool to look at it. I want I want a car that still looks good. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But it it's like like the sleeper style. You know what I mean? Well, bro, That's I drive opinion. I drive a Subaru STI, so I'm I'm all about that car that looks like a pig but goes like stink. You know, it's like I I'd rather yeah. have performance over looks. Like, yeah, yeah, you can go drive around in a Pontiac Fiero with like a Lamborghini body kit on it, and you know, go zero to sixty in thirteen seconds. But I'd rather I'd rather just drive the Fiero with like drop a Buick V8 in it or something like that, and just go like a stabbed rat. Hey, Darka, thank you for the 20, the 20 pounds, man. We sure do appreciate that. Neota 03, thank you for the ten dollar super chat. He said, I have a Behringer. Uh, QX 1202 mixer. He said, I use a 48 uh, volt condition. Uh, oh, condenser mic. And I get a hiss with line in USB. Any recommendations to reduce the hiss when doing live streams or vid recording without a uh, NVIDIA card? Actually, yeah. Uh, if you have. Um, so there's two ways that you can connect an audio device over USB. And one of them is an analog connection. There's a way for it to establish an analog connection over the USB. And the mixer boards generally do this instead of creating a digital connection. It does some weird analog thing. And sometimes you get a buzz in there. All you need to do is get a ferrite core or get a cable with a ferrite core on it. And it usually takes that hiss right out of it. And also make sure that you have a solid ground. So if you're plugging in your if you're plugging in your mixer and it doesn't have a third prong going into the outlet for a ground, see if there's a screw on the back of it. They usually do that. That has a little ground. It looks like a little antenna. And you can wrap a piece of wire around that and run it to ground yourself. And just ground it off to something. You can even ground it off to the third pin on your electrical system in your house. I don't think that's really a recommended way to do it. Talk to an electrician. But uh, but gr- ground it and it'll get rid of the buzz. But I found uh, I had the same problem with my Yamaha. And I just, I all I did was put a ferrite core on the USB. So the USB cable, I just got one of those ferrite cores that you clipped together. And I just stuck it right around the cable. And, and the little bit of buzz went away. So that's what I would try first before you go try to like ground the thing. Uh, Eric Lacasa, thank you for the five Canadian dollars. He said the chipset approach, or sorry, the chiplet approach can give more yield than the monolithic die approach. And I think that's why AMD has an edge right now. Is that way the chiplet approach? Is that like the, the seven nanometer, like doing stacked well, stuff or. So if you, if you look at the, at the physical makeup of the, of the, the CPUs, it, it, it's actually like four, four dies smooshed into one big die okay and then they got that infinity fabric stuff if, if i if i were if I'm, I'm i could be a little wrong in do they all share so a common pretty, cache or do they all have like their own cache i don't really know i remember hmm. i remember don had some issue with um with the threadripper cpus uh and the compute stuff it, it, it got weird with memory sharing or something and i can't remember it's 
just I read too much stuff, man. It gets me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it might be. Thank you for that five dollar super chat earlier. I'm sorry that one slipped by me, bud. Oh, we really do appreciate it, guys. Well, if you got any questions, by all means, ask. I guess we could talk. Oh, the yeah, stimulus. Yeah. Did, you, did you get your stimulus check yet? I the, did. I did. See, yeah. I, I yeah, still haven't gotten mine, so I, I, I don't, I don't know what's going on. They must think that I make too much money or something doing oh. this YouTube millions or something. But uh, oh. last year, my taxes like reported that I made like next to nothing, and the year before that, I also operated at a loss. So I don't know how I wouldn't be eligible for this. So we have to go through that stupid website thing and like set up direct deposit yeah. stuff and see if it all works. Yeah. But uh, hopefully most of you guys got your stimulus checks because I know that that's been a really big deal for a lot of people uh, struggling right now because of the whole human malware situation. It really sucks, man. This this whole thing's been really unfortunate, but I think we've handled it well. I think everybody has actually handled this way better than I thought. Like when this all first started and everybody was being like locked away in their little houses and the governors are like, oh, we got to stop doing this and all the confusing signaling sent from the government. I was like, oh, God, this is going to end badly. And yeah. truth be told, the vast majority of people have been handling this really well, even with the increased stress. Um, it, it seems like it seems like we're doing a pretty good job. And actually, I'm going to go ahead and credit the Internet for a lot of that. I think being oh, could for you, sure. Could, could you imagine something like this happening where all we had was like television? We didn't have any way to talk to oh, people other than call them like on the phone the and 80s? stuff. Yeah, dude. I, yeah. I don't think that in the 80s, I think everybody would have just laughed and like just walked out on the street and just been like, screw you. Like nobody would have got the news. Like three weeks yeah. later, people would still be stumbling around and be like, what are you talking about? What is this? Like uh, the Internet Ugh. really has allowed information to travel at such a fast rate and connect people through video games, connect people through video chat, connect people through VR, connect people through so many different means that I think that it's allowed us to weather something like this way better than if we didn't have the Internet. So for once, I'm actually going to give the Internet a big thumbs up. Now, there's the bad side, too, but we won't talk about that. But I'm going to give the Internet a big thumbs up today for 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 actually being useful for once instead of just pure cancer. Um, and I can even I can good even, job, Internet. Yeah, good, good job, Internet. I can even vouch for that, too, that it's actually been uh, it's actually been a very therapeutic thing for me. And I hope it has been for a lot of you guys, too. Hey, John, uh, Jonathan Ritter. Thank you. The five dollar tip. He said wife asked what I was watching. My response was nerdgasm barn or ner nerd Euclid's barnagasm. <laughs> That's cute. I don't know. Just just tell tell her you're watching a a, a fat sweaty man on the internet, and 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 see what kind of look you get. See if you get the raised eyebrow. See if you get the rock brow. Where it's like, <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, and the last thing, five uh, G is an evil, dude. Can we get oh, a, can we get a hell yeah for five G is an evil? Come on. So I talked to Graham. Who's, who's spreading that bullshit? Oh, so, so, which so I, Graham works for Team. He does. Graham works for T-Mobile, oh, and I talked. I talked to him yeah, the other day. I'm sure we. I'm sure we can say that. No, no, he's he, he's public with it. Um, so I talked to him the other day, and he said that there have actually been multiple cases of cell towers getting burned down. There I'm are sure literally people this. going. I thought it was a joke at first, but no, apparently it's not. This has been happening in the UK too, so it's not just dumb Americans this time. There's dumb dumb UK people too. But people are running around and burning towers down and sabotaging towers and cutting the cables and vandalizing this stuff because some rumors started somewhere, who even knows, that 5G causes the human malware virus. It does not. The 5G transmissions are absolutely benign and harmless. The power levels that they operate on are super, super low. It's gotten to the point now where there's so many stupid people taking this seriously that it's still trending. And I'm like, okay. I, this is a joke, guys. You know, it's it's like j just like just like you're not going to go give yourself a bleach enema because somebody said disinfectants will kill the kill the virus. You're not going to go burn down 5G towers because you think it's going to give you a virus. It's not. It's not how biology works. OK, so please tell if you if you have any conspiracy theorists in your family that even entertain the notion that 5G is causing problems, please shut that shit down right away and tell them to fucking go find some other conspiracy that's less damaging like Flat Earth. Like Flat Earth, that's a healthy one. Go after that one because nobody believes sure. it anyways. Nobody's going to burn their Earth down because it's flat. Um, <sighs> but, but when you make people believe that these towers that are in their neighborhood are like giving them diseases and stuff like that, then yeah, they are going to get scared and start destroying shit. So, and then... Uh, I would like to also remind you guys that a lot of these 5G towers are also broadcasting on the other spectrums, which means when you burn them down, yeah, you're actually taking out, out your own cell service. <laughs> Do you really want to disconnect yourself from the world right now? Like the Internet is the one thing we kind of depend on right now to keep us all interconnected. And if you're going to run around and go all Rambo on the infrastructure, you're going to end up hurting yourself in the process. So please, for love of everything that's holy to you or not holy to you, stop feeding into this conspiracy bullshit. Okay. 
for the love of all that is good and delicious in this world. Seriously. I'm just, man, I'm so tired between, Sweet between, film your, between film your hospital, between, uh, uh, burning down cell towers, uh, yeah. flat earth. What's, I mean, these things keep popping up all over the place and I'm like, Oh God, unfortunately the internet doing a good thing also means that it's doing bad things, which are people just, or the scams that are going on right now with the stimulus check thing. Like people, you know, yeah. scam. People are getting scam oh, calls and getting sure. scammed out of their stimulus. And then you got these mega church pastors that are like, "Oh, d- do this, donate your stimulus to our church challenge." Like, right. oh, man, the world we live in. So, just realize that just because you're not stupid enough to fall for it, because you're an intelligent person, doesn't mean that there aren't people related to you or in your circle that are stupid enough to fall for it. So please protect them. Extend your intelligence around them. Use it as a shield. And let's let's try to slow. We're not going to stop it, but let's try to slow this shit down because it's getting insane. Hey, uh, Lael, what's up, Lael? He said, "You see where certain D lives channels are getting X tagged, and unless people have X tag in their options, cut on the channel is not findable by random people." So shadow banning. Ah, uh, did what? you understand any of that? No. You see where certain D live channels? Okay, I L- Lael, you need to like. Try hold that on. again. Oh, hold on, hold on. Okay, D Live. Okay. That yeah, sounds yeah, familiar. Yeah. Okay, try to D get D Live is a is a streaming platform. Okay, so certain. So let's let's try and translate this. Okay, so D Live is a live streaming platform. Uh, I think it's based on blockchain or something. Um. Okay, so certain D Live channels. Let's 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 work through this. What is it now? What? What is it? Certain D Live channels. What? Here, let me try to read it again. Okay, hold on. I'm gonna, I'm okay. gonna, I'm gonna do this. Okay, ready? He said, "You see where certain D live channels are getting X tagged, oh. and unless people have X tag in their options cut on, the channel is not findable by random people." So shadow banning. Oh, okay. So, okay, so I what, mean, what did you get a, from that? I think I understand. I okay. think so. There's some, there's some thing. Some. Oh, oh, I see it. Okay, so there. I mean, go to D live TV. And then click the the little triple dot hamburger in the upper right. There's a. There's I don't even a, know what uh, this is. Like what? What is this? Is a live streaming platform? Oh, okay, okay. So there's people here. I've never I've never heard of yeah. this. Um. Okay, so, so we know what D Live is now. Click the little hamburger. Okay. Well, the three uh, dots in the upper right. There's a there's a toggle there that says oh, I see. show X tagged content. Okay. So and so show um, X tagged content. Okay. It says here all political news and NSFW content, NSFW content that contains extreme statements or profanity, which is a reasonable viewer may not want to be seen accessing in a public or formal setting, such as a workplace, should be tagged as X. So, I mean, basically, they're not showing this X tagged content unless oh. you have the the switch turned on. Well, I don't see a problem with that. Like, why would anybody have a problem with that? I don't know. Like, yeah, just, they're just literally the, giving you the, the option. On. Yeah, they're, they're literally giving you the option to say, I want to see cancer. Show me cancer. And you have that option. So, I mean, are you saying that that's shadow banning because you have to go turn on that option? Because I, w- I would argue that that's the platform actually giving you a lot more latitude than most platforms would give you by actually having it be an optional thing rather than just banning it outright. I mean, that'd be my opinion on it. Like, I, I honestly, I didn't even know this D Live thing existed though. So wait, I checked the box. I've so this mean now I can type this. in like boobies and I'll see booby streams. I don't think, I don't think it, it's, it seems Hold to on. be more. Um, well, I that's think it a little to awkward. Related to what I typed in boobies like, and, and the first streamer that came up. She's not streaming right now, but she. Okay, I won't. I can't say this. Hold on here. <laughs> okay, there's some interesting streamers on this platform. Okay. All right. What if I type in uh, vag? We'll see what we get. I mean, I'm not seeing a lot of bad stuff, honestly. Like I, I was expecting that when I flipped that flag that I was going to see like just the craziest crap. And yeah, why is it trying to translate from Turkish? Oh, cause this is a Turkish streamer. Okay. never mind. I'm like, I'm like, <laughs> what, what is, streamer. what is it doing to me here? I don't know. Yeah. What do you mean? Oh, wait, I got to yes. close this. I'm all like broadcasting this random guy on DLive. Well, I didn't even know DLive existed, so I'm going to check this out because this looks like a new avenue and rat hole that I want to go down. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, it's something else for sure. I've never even heard of it. Like, is it, it looked like there's a lot of people streaming on it, so I guess it's probably have, somewhat mainstream. I have heard of it, but I had never checked it out. Well, I'm going to check it out, dude. I, You know what I've been noticing is a lot of people lately have been asking me on Twitch, is Mixer a better platform? 
Like, I don't know, did Twitch do something recently that just, like, pissed off the whole community? Because I've been getting that a lot lately. Like, should I stream on Mixer instead? Pick one. Just pick yeah. one. I mean, honestly, okay. the, so here's the thing. Just remember, in Microsoft opinion, owns Mixer. So in a total non-biased yeah. way, do not use their products. Do not use them. Whatever. I mean, pick one. Facebook Live, yeah. YouTube Gaming, Mixer, DLive, Twitch, whatever. Pick one. Because the thing is, the organic reach the the findability on any of these platforms is next to zero people aren't going to just randomly stumble across your live stream on any of these channels yeah. you really need to have a presence elsewhere where it is easier to find um organic audience like instagram in particular uh is a great uh or twitter even where you can find a community build a outside of your live streaming platform and bring youtube i hate man as much hate as youtube gets it is still fantastic for finding new fresh content that you are actually wanting to watch put yep. your highlights and stuff on youtube spread those around on instagram and twitter and lead people back to your live stream yeah oh somebody said so dlive is decentralized uh blockchain yeah, it's like blockchain Something oh about the blockchain. okay so ba so basically okay so that means that if you're streaming on that platform really there's nothing they can do to police it beyond just the index of finding the things in the first place it's kind of like a uh, library L lbry have you guys seen that it's okay. like it's like decentralized youtube all my videos get uploaded when i upload to youtube they automatically get uploaded there also um but it's basically like decentralized youtube but just keep in mind that like on decentralized platforms like that, you can only watch the videos if the blockchain is being shared by enough people and there's more supply than there is demand. Otherwise, the whole shit falls apart. So just that that's I, I wouldn't rely on a blockchain based technology for something like live streaming, honestly. Not to say it isn't cool. Hey, Naota, thank you for the ten dollars. You said, how would you ground a mixer if there's no grounding screw or the power supply is an external brick with two prongs? Ooh, that's a good question. Uh. Well, technically, well, here's the thing. Try a ferrite core first on the USB because you may not have to ground it. You, you may not have to ground it at all. And to be honest, if, if if you're going through USB to your computer, it should be grounding through the USB plane, at least to some extent. It depends on the circuitry that's in the mixer board. Um, but as far as like grounding it, I don't really know. I mean, I'm sure there's a way you could probably open it up and you could do some kind of ground, but I don't really know. Uh, let's see here. C Mopar said, I've just randomly stumbled across like 95% of the streamers I watch. Oh, so you, sure. you just wander around and just click on stuff. I mean, honestly, oh. that's how I find most like, of my YouTubers I follow. I would, I'm I would, I, I'm curious to know like what your process was. Um, was it He's just like, from booby browse? streamers was, enter? Click, 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 click. Was click. it a Google search? Was it, um, was it off? Like, I'm curious, I'm curious to know how is Twitch, um, is Twitch offering them as suggestions? I know they've been trying really hard to be better about um, offering like related content or like they'll show you um, like, oh, people who watch this person also watch these people. Uh, mostly raids. See, okay. So see, that's a good way to, I need to be better about that myself. Um, spreading, spreading the love. Like that, I love rating um, people. It actually is my feel, it's my feel good moment of the day when I can just take a huge gob of viewers and dude, just drop them cool. on somebody. I, I I love it. I love it. you're the best. I mean, like it when, makes my uh, nerd giant like, tingle. The last the last time you rated me, um, when I finally did end, there was still like sixty people, which was really cool. And no, just like I, a I love that when, when I raid. So, but here's the problem with rating. I'm going to tell you, and this is a scary problem that everybody needs to be aware of. Sometimes you'll raid somebody who's better than you are, and then your audience <laughs> stays with them and never comes back. Oh no! Oh no! But it's 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 oh, it's, no. it's 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 it's, a, it's an occupational hazard. We just have to accept it. <laughs> yeah. No, I I always laugh because like war like Warwitch. Whenever I raid Warwitch, I'll like go over there with the raid. Like I'll raid and I'll go over there, and then I'll find like twenty people that are watching his stream that normally watch mine. Mm -hmm. But when he's streaming, yeah. it's like they make the executive decision that he's the better streamer. And I'm gonna be honest, he is actually, but. <laughs> uh, I mean, I'd shut my stream down and watch him if I could uh, most days. He's he's actually uh, one of the biggest inspirations for me starting to live stream. Uh, oh, do you, cool. have an do you have an intruder in your house? No, I just thought I, thought I heard my dog barking. Oh, your pity? Yeah. Dude, do you, what, do you, want, do you want to show your pity oh, off shit. on stream? I want, I want to see your pity. Hang on, yeah, I'll be right back. Let yeah, go, go, go get her. Go get her. He has, he, he has the most adorable little pit bull. Oh, my gosh. Just adorable. 
people shouldn't be afraid of pit bulls, by the way. It's it's how they're raised. Every dog is only going to be as good as it's raised. Like, don't. I, I, when I grew up around pit bulls and they're the most misunderstood animal, like in the animal kingdom. And you know exactly what I'm talking about. If you've ever owned a pit bull, uh, they're freaking just some of the most awesome freaking dogs ever when you raise them from a pup. Uh, and even if you get one later on in life that's been abused or something like that, it, um, usually they'll be a little bit more cautious and they're a little bit harder to earn their trust. But once you do, they're sweet dogs, really, really sweet dogs. Oh, it's a pity. It's a pity. Look at that pity. Hello. Look at you, gorgeous dog. Look at you. Oh man. I would just, I'd snuggle the shit out of that right there. What what's her name? Daisy. Daisy. You look like a Daisy. You put on the headphones on her. <laughs> Hi Daisy. Oh Daisy's a good girl. Daisy's a good girl. Look at those eyes. Oh my god. Daisy's a good girl. Who's a good girl? I I, I call I called her a good girl a whole bunch. <laughs> she is so sweet. Look at her. She's a girl. She doesn't like. She doesn't like being up here. So, uh, how, how, how much she weigh? Uh, about 60 pounds. Okay. Okay. For, for, for a female, that's a decent sized penny. Yeah. She's pretty big. Yeah. Cause I was going to say 40, 50 pounds. I know the males get a lot bigger. Come here. Look, up. look hi. Hi, there Daisy. <laughs> hi, Daisy. Oh, sweet girl. I'm not supposed to be up here. I'm <laughs> She's like, I'm up. in trouble. I'm in trouble. I know. Look at that face. Look at that face. You can tell that's the, oh shit. I've, I've, I've chewed up something face. All right. All right. Okay, we can go. All back right. Let, let She's like, I'm being punished. I'm being punished. Why? Oh, I, I love pit bulls. They're, they're they are sweet dogs. It's just it's unfortunate that you know uh, they've been demonized to the point where it's like people are just instantly afraid of them when they see them. A lot of people are, and it's it's totally not earned. Like the whole lockjaw thing's total bullshit. Urban legend. Um, <laughs> There's so many urban legends around pit bulls. And then, like, people, oh, oh but they're fighting dogs and people fight them. It's like, dude, you can fight any dogs. You could literally fight chihuahuas yeah. and shit and they'd kill each other. Like, yeah, man. It's how you raise look the up, animal. Look up, look up the statistics on dog bite reports. Yeah. And, it, see, and see who's in the top five of dog bites. Yeah. And you, and you know what'll surprise you? It's the smaller dogs. The smaller yeah, dogs like, bite way more than the bigger dogs because they have, uh, uh, basically, the, ch chihuahuas. Like, oh, my Child's God, my, poodles. my, uh, my, was it my grandma? I think it was my great grandma had this little fucking teacup poodle that was like this big. It like fit in her purse. Like she had a little purse that she carried around with her. There was a dog purse. And, and yeah. this, this little fucking thing, you'd get close to it and go. And it'd be like shaking, like shaking and like <laughs> yeah. foaming at the mouth and shit. And it's like 800 years old. And when I was a kid, I was scared to death of this little fucking thing. Cause she'd like take it out and set it down to like go use the bathroom. And it'd just start barking and running after me. And I was scared shitless of this thing because it was just it literally just start nipping at you and biting your fingers and shit and drawing blood. I was like, my God, Cujo. But then she'd be like, oh, it's a little princess. Oh, it's a little princess. Such a pretty dog. Such a pretty dog. And she'd be like, all nice. Then I get closer. And she hated everybody, especially men. Yeah. It's because she raised that dog that way. That dog wouldn't have been that way if I raised it. Hey, Linus, four right. paws. Thank you. Thank you for the for the two dollars super chat. We appreciate that. Hey, Krillin said smaller dogs are assholes. I prefer bigger dogs because they're so sweet. Actually, I've had small dogs almost all my life, and they have all been really sweet and well tempered dogs. It just depends on how you raise them, right? Uh, well, somebody's getting banned. Do, 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 Oops. Do, do. Oh, wait, hold on. Hold on. Wait a second. I think he was talking about the little dog that was biting me, not your dog. Oh. I, got, I got confused by that. Oops. For a second, I was like, he's like, kick the shit out of that dog. I was like, oh, no, you won't. But yeah, in, in, in that in that case, I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and say, yeah, maybe because <laughs> that dog, that dog was really fucked up. Um, but no, I've I've been around tons of pit bulls. You know, another dog that's really misunderstood yeah. is Rottweilers. Yeah, same. like Rottweilers yeah. are just they're they're, they're a re like they, they're referred to as junkyard dogs. Like that's what most people see them as. Right. They're like, that's a junkyard dog because you see them. You see them in a lot of junkyards. But they're a super loyal dog. They're very protect protective. But, dude, you can do, like, when you raise them right, like, from a pup shit. When I was a kid, I was, like, four years old. I used to jump on my uh, friend's Rottweiler that was probably a 110, 120-pound dog. And I'd get yeah. up on that bitch and just ride him around like a horse. And he'd be, like, and I'd be playing with him and pulling on his jowls and yanking on his tail and stuff. And he would just be, like, having the greatest time of his life. He thought it was the greatest shit ever. 
And so they're they're they just they they sound a little bit intimidating, but no, if you raise them right, they're total sweethearts. Yeah, I actually that's wish I could like have a dog. The, the, that's the truth for people. That's the truth for dogs. It's, yeah, unfortunately, yeah. my son he's he's a little bit afraid of dogs because uh, the sound, just the barking. Sure. Um, sure. it's it's kind of a sensory trigger for him. So so you know he's gotten a little bit better over the years, like where he'll go up and he'll pet a dog if it's calm. But like really excited mm-hmm. dogs, like even like Dalmatians and stuff that are just like fucking, I want to lick you, I want to lick you, I want to lick you. By the way, if you yeah. want a dog that has the highest ADHD of any dog in the animal kingdom, get a Dalmatian. Have you yeah. ever been around a Dalmatian? Uh, no, I don't think I have, actually. They are the most hyperactive dog you've ever encountered. And I, and I thought it was just one dog, but I knew I, I've been around three of them throughout my life. And all three of them were exactly the same. Exactly. <laughs> raised by three different owners, all raised from pups except for one. They are yeah. they are just the most rambunctious, flying off the wall ADHD dogs I've ever seen in my life, <laughs> and it's like fun for like ten minutes, and then after that you're like, oh my god, can we please put them on like a six inch chain? Because dude, they they have infinite energy. They just they're like they're like a little toddler. They just run around five hundred miles an hour, knocking everything over, jumping up on you, licking you, and 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 nipping at you and stuff, and then they just go to sleep. And then like five minutes later, they're up and doing it again. It's like I I can't imagine anybody that has a Dalmatian that has another dog. Like, I don't know how you could have another animal around a Dalmatian. That's the only dog that I've ever seen in my entire life where I'm like, regardless of how you raise it, I think they're just completely crazy. They're just bad shit yeah, crazy. Like, yeah. not dangerous, just, just bad shit crazy. Uh, what, JRTs? Oh, Jack Russell Terriers? I like Jack Russell Terriers, yeah. though. Jacks yeah, are pretty cool. Or like Dachshunds? super loyal. Yeah, they are. They're like they're, they're like one one family. Like, you can't rehome. I mean, I'm sh- there's always exceptions and stuff, but yeah. I hear like, once, once you have a, a jack, like it's locked in with you, and uh, that's that. Yeah, there's a lot of one people dogs out there. Like I know, um, I know that pit bulls can have a tendency to be loyal to one owner. Like not all of them, but but if, but usually if you raise them from a pup and you get a really close relationship with you, they tend to pick you and nobody else. Like they'll tolerate yeah. other people and they'll hang out around other people and stuff, but it's like they are only loyal really to one person. Um, the ones that I grew up around, but they were all nice. They were all nice. Like people that, and it's sad. Cause like, I think a lot of them get put to sleep and a lot of them don't get adopted because people are afraid of them. Yeah. And it's just, it's total bull. It's like total bull. They're, they're completely super chill dogs. And then everybody's like, Oh my God, but a pit bull, you know, ki- you know, this, this crazy pit bull foam in the mouth, like killed this child or something like that. It's nah. like, yeah, there's, it, it, there are freak accidents that do happen with abused animals, like, like legit fought dogs, but right. that's super, super rare. I gotta say. Like I'm not the best owner of of Daisy. Like I'll put that out there right now. Like I have not trained her as well as, as she should have been. And and like I uh with my stimulus actually, I'm going to work very hard to rectify that. But I did a I did a a pretty good job because as an example, there was some um my I guess my lady's sister in law, right? Her brother's wife. Yep. Um, brought um, her little toddler and their fairly newborn uh, daughter over, and the the infant um, still still like has to hang in the car seat kind of thing, right? Um, Daisy, there was a little bit of concern. We're all kind of standing around looking, like just to make sure. She's always been good around the toddler, who she was two or three at the time. Yeah. Um, a little a little clumsy, you know. Try to sniff and poke, and oops, you know, you might knock the little kid over. But like, okay, we're all watching around the baby, and she just kind of gets in there, and I'm like, oh, yeah, like, okay. what is this? You're cool, <laughs> you're cool. And then that was that, and then it's like, yeah. and and ever since then, she's been super cool around the, those little girls as they as they come over and grown up and stuff. They're like, oh, yep, okay, I remember you. And that kind of thing is is yeah. And like, I I really do want to get her trained better because she does a lot of um what we call uh nuisance barking. Like if, the, if somebody knocks at the door, she freaks the fuck out. Yeah, somebody's riding a bicycle. Uh, you know, and that's pretty calm. And that's just—I mean, she's out. just being protective of her territory. But there's a time and a place. Right? Yeah, you don't know. No, you definitely something like, you have to train out. It's not so much like I wouldn't. I feel like I wouldn't want her to 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 completely stop, like not do it ever at all. What I want is her to stop when I tell her to stop. Yeah, like it's okay. It's okay to bark when somebody knocks on the door. It's not okay to keep doing it, and and I need you to stop when I tell you it's okay. Like I know this person, because like, you know, maybe somebody does try to like break in. I would like her to to bark 
and, and that kind of a thing. But if I say, okay, stop, that's a nice, she needs to stop. <laughs> yeah. I know so. my, my mom, uh, she, she was an animal trainer, like growing up. My mom, like get all these like misfit animals and train them back to a point and then give them to somebody once they, you know, they eat on their own or they, they get their bad behaviors gone. She used to train horses and stuff. And I remember we did have one dog that would just bark constantly, just nonstop. Didn't even matter if it was noises or not. The dog would just literally just run around the house, just barking its ass off at everything. And I remember my mom, she used to take the dog and she found a place in the house that it didn't like. Like, I think it was next to the furnace in the back room because the furnace made a weird noise and the dog didn't like it. So what my mom did is every time the dog barked, she'd go over, she'd pick up the dog, she'd take it out there and she'd sit it down next to that furnace because then the dog would be focused on the sound coming from the furnace instead of barking. It was like misdirecting the dog. The dog was like, oh shit, now I got to worry about this thing making a noise. And that noise source can be anything. It can be a whistle. It can be a clicker. It can be all kinds of things. But I'll tell you what, it didn't take my mom a week of just picking up that dog every time it started barking like crazy and just taking it back there and just sit. She'd sit there next to it so it wouldn't run off. And she'd just sit there next to it with the furnace and it would focus on the furnace and it wouldn't bark. And I, we did that for like a week and the dog just like stopped barking after that, like all together. Mm-hmm. Like it was like, it, it was weird. My mom used to have like weird methods for like training animals, but that seemed to be one that worked pretty good. Yeah. So maybe if, if she's if she's barking at stuff like random noises and stuff, just find a place in the house. It doesn't even have to be like a, a disturbing place. It just, she has to know that if she barks, that's where she goes. Like, yeah, like if she barks, been, that's the place where, and she can't go anywhere else. It's like time out for a kid, basically. And she'll start associating barking with her not having her freedom. She has to stay in that corner when she yeah. barks and she'll remember, I've she'll been, connect it. I've actually been doing that when it comes to the vacuum. Um, and like, I'll have her sit in one place by, yeah. the, by the sliding door and she'll sit there. And, but I kind of have to watch her because she'll, she'll move. She wants to go get it, but she'll sit there and like, you know, okay, okay, yeah. wait, 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 wait. And then, and even when the thing comes real close to her, like it's, I, so I don't know exactly what is, is, is the trigger there. Does she like, have that look I in her eyes though? Like she's just shaking. She wants to bite the shit out of that thing. No, not really. It's, it's more just like boredom. Like she's just, I don't know. I, I can't, I can't really tell. It's just weird. Um, <laughs> Cause I was going to say, uh, well, every dog we ever had growing up hated the vacuum cleaner, like to the point where they'd go up and just nip at the front yeah. of it. Like you're going forward and backwards and it's literally just like back up, back up the whole time you're back. And we thought it was funny. Like that was one behavior we never trained out of the dog. Cause we thought it was hilarious that the dog would go that hard <laughs> against the vacuum. Cleaner. Even the smallest one, we had a, we had a little dog that was like a poodle, uh, yeah, God, what was it? it? All of our dogs were mutts. We never had any purebred anything. Mm-hmm. And uh, but it was a little poodle. It was probably, I don't know, maybe about like that big. It wasn't it wasn't a huge dog, maybe like 25 pounds, 30 pounds. Not even that, maybe 25 pounds. And my God, man, you did, the dog was like so docile, except for when the vacuum was going. When the vacuum was going, total Cujo, like foaming at the mouth, barking, eyeballs, like the whites of the eyeballs showing. I mean, that dog wanted to kill that vacuum cleaner. And it was one of those really old Kirby, va- like Kirby vacuums, like hand me down Kirby vacuums, like big metal, scary, loud, crazy. Like the dog couldn't hurt it, obviously. But it was just yeah, funny because right. it wouldn't even bite it. It just turned its head sideways and be like, Rrr! and then you like start moving it towards it and it would like run away. And then as you're pulling back, it'd come back and it just follow you around the whole house vacuuming, doing that. It's crazy That's shit cool. ever. Crazy shit ever. I, I, I do miss having dogs, though. Growing up, I always had dogs. Now I just have cats and cats yeah. are kind of cats are cool. But the pr- difference between cats and dogs is like dogs want to please you. They want to be your friend. They want to hang out with you. They want to snuggle with you. It's like they have real personalities. Cats are like, fuck you unless I'm cold like that. That's right. cat, cats are like, right. listen, I'm cold or I'm tired. Now I'm going to come sit in your lap. But if you touch me wrong <laughs> or look at me wrong or even make a noise, I don't like fuck you. I'm gone. And yeah, I, I, there's I, I no like, real I relationship like dogs better. But yeah, I've had some pretty cool cats. I do love cats, though. I, 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 there's something about just how self-sufficient they are that I like. It's like, you know, how everybody wants that plant that they know, like a cactus. You only have to water it like once a year, set it, set it somewhere and you're good. Yep. But every other plant dies. I feel like that with a yep. dog. Like when you have a dog, it's like it's like playing The Sims. You got to feed it. You got to water it. You got to take it out for walks. You got to tell when it's good and, and tell when it's bad and train it. And, you know, you have to do it with cats. It's like you just bring them in. You just set them down. If you forget to feed them, they, they kill rats and get into the cereal. If you forget to give them water, they drink out of the toilet. It's like. Cats are these animals where it's like if you died, if you were just walking around your house and you died, if you had a dog, your dog would just literally die like five days later from starvation and sadness. The cat would be like eating your body and surviving off it for like the next year. And then it would eventually. just Yeah. And then it would just like burrow through the floor under the under the door and liberate itself like cats. (laughs) Cats are the ultimate street smart animal. That's what I like about them. (laughs) They're awesome, dude. Hey, dude, said next tech talk, we should have some dog training tech talk. 
Ooh, what well, kind of well, uh, no, and the thing is, there's good and bad training stuff. Like, I don't believe in the whole, like, shock collars and shit like that. Yeah. Like, um, I, I hate it when people use I, stuff like that. I understand why I sometimes it has to be deployed, but. I did have one that vibrated, and it was very, very successful. It would, like, I, I could beep. I would beep. And then there was, like, I could crank up the, and it would, it wouldn't, it wasn't a shock. Like, I, I always, I put it on myself first. It wasn't a shock. It was a, it was a vibration. Yeah, and those, those and are perfectly humane. Very, very, that was very effective. Yeah, because you just um, want something to pull the dog's attention. Yeah. You don't want something, you don't want something to physically oh, harm oh. the dog. And those freaking, and I, and I, we used to get drunk at my friend's house and put, he had a shock collar for his little Boston Terriers, which are like a dog that's like this big. And he'd have this tiny little shot collar. We put that. We'd get drunk and put that shit on each other and hit the button. And <laughs> I mean, it was it was a jolt, man. Like oh, I yeah. was like that oh, little yeah. fucking dog. That's got to feel like getting hit with like a cattle prod. And There's we no were joke, drunk and sure. it hurt, man. It made like a snapping noise. Like you put it on your hip, like fuck. Oh god, ow! And leave a little burn mark. I'm like, really? You're putting that on your dog? Like my god, dude. Yeah, so, but but I do understand that there are some cases where you do have to up it to that Andy. Like, if it becomes a situation where it's like the dog has to go to the pound and be put to sleep, or you have to employ something like that to train it, but that should be like a last resort. The vibrating right. ones, though, absolutely fine. Like, the vibrating ones, completely fine. Um, The clickers and the whistles and stuff like that, they're not doing any permanent damage or anything like that. They're just they're just causing the dog to basically misdirect its attention. Uh, and I mean, really, that's all it's about, right? You just have to keep doing things with repetition. Every animal my mom ever trained, the difference is, is just some you have to train a lot longer than others. Some some animals figure shit out real quick. Like we used to have a, a umbrella cock too. They didn't eat. Like that's how my mom got it because they're usually expensive birds. I think they're like 800 or a thousand dollars or something like that. We got one for free because it wouldn't eat because it got taken away from its mom too early. And so it had to be fed with a syringe. So my mom like literally like fed it for like a week on a syringe and then slowly stopped feeding it and letting it get more and more hungry, you know, to where it was getting more aggressive. And then she'd start putting solid food. And it and it's crawl like basically like jamming it down its throat, and yeah. she knew she knew how to do it though. Like she 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 did her research, and pretty soon the bird started eating. We're like, oh shit, okay, now this bird's eating. Let's go ahead and sell it. We can we can get good money for this bird. My mom's like, no, I'm gonna do some more stuff with this bird, dude. She got that bird to say like five sentences. I mean, they they normally can speak, but really not that well. This bird spoke so fucking well. It could like mimic voices. So cool. Um, it would chase the cats around the house. You'd go sick them. Sick, sick him to the bird, and the bird would like fly down on the floor and go chase the cats around with its feathers up. Going, oh, no, that's the cats would just cool. be scattering off into different directions. It was the greatest thing ever. It was the greatest thing ever. Umbrella cockatoo, highly recommend them as a bird. If you if you're a bird lover, uh, those in African grays, those are probably two of my favorite uh, big parrots. And then they got the small. What's the oh, God? What's the small one I like? There's a little green one that's just an itty bitty one about this big, and they're really fucking smart, and they can also talk. Uh oh, wow. shit, I can't remember what they're called. They're really neat though. A friend of mine had one. The only thing I didn't like is the smaller the bird, the more they bite for some reason. I don't know what it is, man. Huh. Like I had a cockatiel, and no matter how much you train that thing, he'd just randomly just go aggro on your finger and make it bleed. Had a love Jeez, bird that would just man. bite the shit out of me no matter what. It'd be sitting there loving on you and its eyes would be blinking and then it'd just go cujo on you. But the big birds Damn. never a parakeet? Yeah, yeah. Actually, parakeets are really, really bad for biting. Oh my god, parakeets are like little little nippers. Um, but none of the big birds, I never had a problem with them like really birds. biting. Like the the two umbrella cockatoos we had growing up didn't didn't bite. Like they'd put their beak on you. Like if they didn't like something, they'd put their beak over your finger and be like, "Yeah, kind of nibble on it and lick it with their tongue and stuff." Be like and hiss, they'd make a hissy noise like <laughs> like don't don't you fuck with me. Um, but they didn't really bite. They didn't really bite. Huh. Dude, I wonder if my shield's charged up. I've been oh. sitting here. I haven't fired this thing up in like it's years. I wonder if it even works. We'll see. Oh, 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 look at that. Hey. Hey, it works. I should just do a video on this. To be like, hey guys, you want to see my my yeah. eight-year-old oh, NVIDIA shield? Let's let's update it to the latest Android and see if it catches do fire. It. Do I it. do love the controller on this thing, though. This is a really well-built unit. Like this is one of the few things NVIDIA. Like I didn't even like the later the later model. Like this thing's built like a brick shit house. I love it. <laughs> Absolutely love it. Oh my god. Well, here let's uh, let's take some last questions and let's wrap her up sure. for the day yeah, because yeah. Uh, we're hitting about that three hour mark and then I got to go take a break and then I'm going to be streaming over on Twitch here in a couple of hours. So if you guys want to join me over there, uh, we'll have we'll have a good time over there for a couple hours. It's my it's my double stream day. Every two weeks I land on a double stream day. Oh nice. Uh, Gadget Joe. What do you, what do you guys think of the new season? What's that? Oh, go ahead. 
Oh, no, uh, no, Ga- you go, you go Gadget Joe, thank you for that for that five uh, pound ruse, man. He said, I got oh, five right kids on, and you. one dog. That's enough. Oh, and Jerry, I uploaded the video we spoke about. Thanks for your time. You are very welcome, Gadget Joe. I'll check that out later. Uh, Lioness Four Paws, again, thank you for that, that $2. I just now saw the, the little emoji that you sent over. That was very nice. James Janus said, what do you guys think of the new Cheese Grater Mac Pro where you have to sell your kidney just to buy it? I have no idea why that thing is so fucking expensive. Like, there is nothing about that thing that justifies the cost even remotely. Because I think fully specced out, it's like $53,000 or some stupid fucking, like, it makes no sense. Like, no, here, I'm going to, I'm going to just go to Apple right now and spec one out. It's, yeah, it's, it's insane. It like, doesn't even make like, sense. Okay, look, to be fair, you could spec out a similar priced Dell or HP and, and they're going to be fairly equivalent. People do give a lot of shit to Apple for it, but even like at the cheapest it's way overpriced for what you're getting. Um, I mean, just, I mean, not to sure. toot porn again or commercial here, but like, check out, we, Future Systems has Mac Pro versus PC on uh, Premiere, Photoshop, and After Effects. And for $4,000, you can get like anywhere from 10 to 50% better performance, depending on the software and what you're doing. Dude, the cheapest Mac Pro is six, they start at 6,000. Like for yeah. app and that and that's for an eight yeah. core three point five gigahertz Xeon W, uh, thir- only thirty two mm-hmm. gigs of RAM, a Radeon five eighty X, two hundred and fifty six gigs of storage. That's it, a terabyte. So that that Xeon W was was specifically designed by Intel for Apple for the Mac Pro. Um, you can purchase that separately now. You can actually buy that same processor, like you know, um, a la carte, I guess. But even still, the like. Uh, 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 an AMD processor for a quarter the cost is going to be better performance. Yep. Okay. So I just spec'd out my my dream Mac Pro if there is such a thing, and the total price is fifty four thousand four hundred and forty seven dollars and ninety eight cents, and that's not including Dude. a monitor or a keyboard. Dude, you could buy ten <laughs> PCs that are all going to be better than that. So that so price. here here's the specs. If you guys want to know the specs for that, I mean, because some some of the specs are impressive. So 2.5 gigahertz, 28 core Intel Xeon W processor. Okay, fair enough. That's their proprietary shit, whatever. 1.5 terabytes of DDR4 memory, and it's ECC. So I'm gonna that that right there is twenty thousand dollar option. Yeah, it's twenty grand just for 1.5 terabytes. That's actually what it would cost. Like that's expensive. I agree. I agree. Two Radeon (laughs) Pro Vega two duos with 32 gig uh, each. Okay. And HBM2 memory for each. Okay, so I don't know. That, that sounds like a pretty badass card, and there's two of them. Eight terabytes of SSD storage. Um, Apple Afterburner card, whatever the fuck that is. I'm guessing that's a proprietary accelerator. Uh, stainless yeah. steel frame with wheels. That's a $400 option if you would like a stainless steel frame with wheels so that you can wheel your little Mac Pro around your room and show it off to your friends. That's 400 bucks for that. Not for a case, for the wheels for it. Uh, let's see, Magic Mouse and Trackpad too. So it does come with a mouse and a trackpad and a Magic Keyboard. Okay, so it did come with a keyboard for that price. You know, I, I feel like I do need to say that. And uh, let's see, how much was the option for the bigger processor? So it was, hold on here. Uh, here, click. Oh shit, it's not even let me go back and click on stuff. After you click on some options, it doesn't let you go back. So if I only want 32 gigs of RAM though, it's $25,000 left, less. So that's good. But it is it is overly priced for what it is. I mean, it's you're you're paying for the ecosystem. You're paying for the operating system. You know, you're paying for all that shit, really. And and you're paying to be in that proprietary, you know, environment where you can sniff your own farts. Pretty much is what you're doing. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, rollers, he said, uh, is what you don't see. You have to pay for the overpaid Apple designers and engineers to come up with ideas. Uh, you know what? They should be able to come up with ideas way easier because they're in that big giant glass billion dollar building. Like that should inspire like the yeah. one with the glass wall. Did you hear about the employees running into the wall? Did you ever hear that story? No, but I'm not surprised. So so at Apple, they built they built that big, what do they call it? The the mega complex or whatever the fuck it is at the at the oh, center spaceship of spaceship or whatever. Yeah, right? it look, it's like spaceship or something. Yeah, but it's all glass. Uh, all the walls, yeah. interior, the exterior walls, it's all glass and they're all curved. All the hallways are curved inside of it. So what happens is people are looking down at their watches and looking at their phones while they're walking and they kept drifting into the walls. And they actually had a couple uh, calls by ambulances for people break broken arms, uh, broken nose, lacerations. And so they had to go around and put stickers at visual heights on all the windows, like every so many feet. 
so that you had a visual cue and an indicator that there was a glass there was glass there so that you wouldn't run into it anymore. So they basically spent all that money building this like huge sophisticated looking futuristic building and they ended up having to put fucking shitty stickers all over the glass everywhere to make it safe. I thought that was pretty funny. Jeez. Wow. Uh, but will it run crisis? Yeah, at almost 15 frames per second, bro. All right. Almost 15 frames per second. Simo Part W said you have to count the 10k licensing fee for the Apple logo. That is true. Right. That is true. All right, guys. Well, I think we're going to go ahead and wrap it up. This is another Tech Talk in the bag. We will see you again next week on Saturday at 10 a.m. In the meantime, I should have some new videos uploading here in the next couple of days to the channel. Also, if you'd like to come join either one of us over for our Twitch live streams that we do during the week, all that is in the video description. So just look down there and the links will be available. And I will be live in probably, uh, let's see, two or three hours. Haven't decided yet. Just check my Twitter. I, I'll tell you guys when I'm going live over on Twitch. And uh, then tomorrow, I'm probably going to start working on another video because I got to start feeding the YouTube algorithm. Otherwise, they're going to think I'm not taking this seriously. Um, right. and, and they're going to punish Thanks me. Thanks, guys. Yeah, no, this has been fun. Uh, let's see. Anything else? Let's see. Uh, Bitnick said it was amazing as always. Well, thank you, sir. Also, uh -huh. thank you for all those super chats, guys. We really do appreciate yeah, it. We, thank you. We, we split thank those you up much. and it just goes into the bigger pool of surviving the apocalypse. So we do appreciate that, guys. And we will see you 10 a.m. Saturday. Next Saturday. Next Saturday. And you good? You good for next Saturday? No, no problem so far. Um, as far as I'm aware. If, yeah, if anything pops that. up, guys, we if, if any change happens, just keep an eye on Twitter. Twitter is where like that's the yep. that's the hub where all the information goes out. So yep. even if you hate Twitter, just like follow you don't have to sign up, just watch the feed. Just follow me and Jerry on Twitter. We'll keep a <laughs> we'll keep you informed. Yeah, totally. All right, guys, we will catch you next time. Now I got to push like five thousand buttons to end the stream because YouTube. Doesn't make this easy. Hold on here. So I'm going to click end stream. Are you sure you want to end the stream? Yeah, just keep waving. Just keep waving. Just Are you sure you want to end the stream? Yep, I'm pretty sure. Oh, and after this, go watch my video, guys. Go watch my video. I need I need to get some more views on the NVIDIA RTX voice video. All right. Tell your friends. Tell your friends. Tell your family. Uh, tell, tell your mistress. Tell your doctor. Tell I don't know. Tell everybody. Tell your masseuse. All right.